the fact to situate ourselves correctly. The world is going through very difficult times. Ghana is no exception. Nigeria is no exception. There's no country in the world that is escaping the ravages of both COVID-19 and also the impact of the Ukraine. But we, in what you need to look at are where are the, the, the elements being put on the ground that look beyond the, the COVID and beyond the Russian-Ukraine war. I think you'll find that in Ghana, the recovery program that we have is one that is, is considered very credible, and it is what is going to give us the opportunity to come out of this period a stronger economy. Mm -hmm. And it is that future that we're looking at when we're attracting people. A lot of stuff in the, in the Ghanaian press want to know is, where exactly is the money going to come from next time around if you're in power for some of the very extravagant promises you've made. You, for example, have offered free secondary schooling for all Ghanaians, a promise you say you absolutely will absolutely. deliver in four years uh, in absolutely, power. So absolutely. have you costed it? How much will it cost? The costing, the costing is, is being done. I mean, very, very soon we will well, be in a position. You can't make a promise like no, that. No, no, no. Very soon, we're going to, we're very soon we're going to be putting it out. You don't know how much. I do know how much, well, but I prefer to tell the Ghanaian people directly well, before you, I tell you. Many of them prefer, want talk. You can no, tell me. It doesn't matter. I would prefer to make that statement to the people of Ghana directly first. As, as to the cost of any So time. you do know the cost? Oh, we do. And we have a very good idea how and how and also what? we're going to finance it. Well, you we don't have to give, you're obviously not going to give me the figures, but just but tell me how you're going to pay going for to it. It's clearly going to be a very great cost. You've got to train the teachers. You've got to build new schools. All of that, is, all of that is, has been adequately costed. And we believe that, first of all, the new revenues will help. More efficient management of what we have now. Growth in the Ghanaian economy. These are the three sources which are going to enable us to fulfill that promise. And it's a promise that has been solemnly made to the Ghanaian people and is going to be solemnly kept, not because it's a campaign promise, but because it is a necessity for the future of our country to educate all our young people yes. and not to acquiesce in a, rela in a situation whereby only segments of the community that have some money are able to educate it's their a, children. It's, an interesting it's a point major here. issue well, then, of me... human capital development. Indeed. And if we do not make the effort to, 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 to achieve that, the development paradigm that we want to achieve is going to be very difficult for us to do Let so. me quote to you the words of Patrick. I will... Something you, you said a little earlier on about freedom of expression. So I, I want to ask you about what is happening in your country. and homosexuality, for example, which I believe is illegal and it's punishable. I mean, why is homosexuality still illegal in your country? Um, these, the, the social, cultural issues, if you like, um, I don't believe that in Ghana so far a sufficiently strong coalition has emerged, which is having that impact on public opinion that will say, change it. Let's then have a new paradigm in Ghana. Is I that something you would get behind? I think, I think that it is something that is bound to happen. And when that happens... What's going to provoke it? What's going to make it happen? Oh, it's, it's the activity, like, like, like elsewhere in the world, like elsewhere in the world, the activities of individuals, of groups. I, I, I grew up in England. I went to school as a young boy in England. And I grew up at the time in England when homosexuality was banned there. It was, it was illegal. And I lived the period when... Uh, British politicians thought it was, it was anathema even to think about uh, changing the law and then suddenly the activities of individuals or groups, uh, a certain awareness, a certain development grew and grew and grew stronger and it forced a change in law. I believe that those are the same processes that will bring about changes uh, in our situation. Uh, at the moment I don't feel, I don't see that in Ghana there is that uh, strong current of opinion that is saying this is something that we need even deal with. It's not, it doesn't, it, 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 it's not so far a matter which is on the agenda. I have said this before, and let me in conclusion stress again that it will not be under the presidency of Nana Adodanko Akufuado that same-sex marriage will be legal. The same-sex marriage will be legalized in Ghana. It will never happen in my time as president.
Let me repeat, it will never happen in my time as president. See, the funny thing is, we walk around thinking it's our right to electricity. Isn't it? It's not a right. It's, it's a not. privilege. I see. It becomes a right when you are paying. Aren't you paying? Some are paying, others are not. No, but... And some are paying, again. others are not. Don't, others are... don't put... Don't, don't lump it together. You're just lumping everything together and see, it's not a privilege. It's a right see, because we paid for it. That's the truth. That's what I'm saying. Some, I said it earlier, some are paying, others are not. Others have tampered with the meter. It's not reading right. Someone has had a prepaid meter that he's been paying only a certain set amount every single month. It's not possible. Cause of Dumso and Dumso it has been caused by the financial and economic mismanagement by of this government. And so we shouldn't be giving them credit for solving a problem Justice. that they have Cause of Dumso and Dumso it has been caused by the financial and economic mismanagement by of this government. And so we shouldn't be giving them credit for solving a problem Justice. that they have so this demonstration is not to topple the government. This demonstration is to indicate to Ghanaians the insensitivity of the Obama's government. The insensitivity of the Obama's government. This is not to topple government. We don't advocate for a regime change this way. We are going to vote next year and we are going to vote about massively. That is good governance. That is partisanship. We are going to democratically remove the Obama from power. Not do this demonstration. But the demonstration is to demonstrate to Obama and Ghanaians that what is going on is bad. You, if you are, if you are feeling the high, if you, you are, are feeling the heat, if you are feeling the heat, like Ghanaians are feeling the heat, if you are buying electricity and they are having it for free, if your salary, you are spending 60% of your salary on electricity bills, then you understand what I'm suffering. Yeah. I am suffering from no, 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 no. How do you expect the members of the, the members as a collective to speak on your behalf when you decided to give majority to such a bad government? NBC. Can they should realize that they are telling matters? Your term matters. Your term matters. When you go and vote, you have to know that the consequences are ahead of you for the four years. The term that the Ghanaians gave to Jamama has shown that they should never, never, never again, never again, never again, never again to never. trust Jamama. I was supposed to go and visit my child around 4, 4 a.m. this morning. So when I went there, I couldn't find my child and the doctor told me to wait outside. So I was outside and he came that um, they are sorry because I've lost my child due to the light out last night. The hospital is experiencing power outages causing dissatisfaction among nursing mothers, patients and family members. During the visit, the light suddenly went off. The light system was here is bad. They give three minutes they off it. I mean, the way they off the light off here is too much. But they have genset that comes on. Oh, look, the gents only here and here the gents work. Mm. But apart from this side and uh, uh, this place, uh, emergency that place. Apart from apart from this side, there's no generator here. Mm. 
Despite the hospital's generator sets, certain departments, including the maternity block, training center, post delivery ward, and OPD, are unable to be powered. The neonatal care unit had light, but a nurse on duty confirmed to us the situation wasn't the same when the light went off the previous day. Pregnant women in the antenatal unit faced longer review times due to equipment requiring electrical power. The administrator of the Themagena Hospital, Apostle Dr. Samuel Abin Mensa, although declined to speak to the news team on camera, said he is yet to be briefed on whether a baby died or not. He also confirmed although the hospital has generators, the capacity is not enough to power the entire hospital. The hospital is experiencing power outages, causing dissatisfaction among nursing mothers, patients and family members. During the visit, the light suddenly went off. The light system was here is bad. They give three minutes they off it. I mean, the way they off the light off here is too much. But they have gen set that comes on. Oh, look, the gents only here and here, the gents work. Mm. But apart from this side, and uh, uh, this place, uh, emergency, that place, apart from, apart from this side, there's no generator here. Mm. Despite the hospital's generator sets, certain departments, including the maternity block, training center, post delivery ward, and OPD, are unable to be powered. The neonatal care unit had light, but a nurse on duty confirmed to us the situation wasn't the same when the light went off the previous day. Pregnant women in the antenatal unit faced longer review times due to equipment requiring electrical power. The administrator of the Themagena Hospital, Apostle Dr. Samuel Abin Mensa, although declined to speak to the news team on camera, said he is yet to be briefed on whether a baby died or not. He also confirmed although the hospital has generators, the capacity is not enough to power the entire hospital. The General Kufuado has made it very clear that his government is going to build a globally competitive economy. Uh, we have not really been thinking global, uh, um, and, and this is what we need to do, that we have to understand that countries, and, and investment moves from country to country, and, and investment moves from country to country, uh, and we, so we have to think global. And so, you know, the Nanaku Fuado policy, which he stated, uh, was, is just basically to build the most people-friendly and the most business-friendly economy in Africa. This is the goal that we are going to try to do, the most people-friendly and the most business-friendly. The tax issue um, is a major issue because if you are so, you know, fixated on revenue, you will essentially end up hurting your production. And, and so if you go back into history, you study the economic history of United States, Germany, England, all of them have used the tax you know, um, policy to encourage production. Mm. And this is why we are saying that, I mean, <coughs> today you have a situation in Ghana, <coughs> unbelievable situation, when businesses <coughs> are out on strike. Businesses who should be selling mm. are out on strike. But why are they out on strike? Because they've been overburdened by taxes. You know, and if you don't take care, you'll be chasing the tax revenue and killing businesses. And when you kill businesses, it means you are causing unemployment. And so if you go back, this is why Nana Kofuado is saying, you know, we need to mobilize financial resources. So why are you mm. going to be imposing VAT on financial services? It doesn't make sense in a country which has got a very large unbanked population and we want people to bank. We will abolish that, mm. he says. We will abolish import duty on all raw materials because that has been a, a policy that will help production. Let the businesses produce. Let them make profit. And when they make profit and employ people, we will get income taxes and we will get corporate taxes. So you don't go ahead to kill the business. No, let them bring in the raw materials. Let them produce. Then you will tax, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, and, and I think that you, then you have a government where you have... Cutlasses being taxed, condoms being taxed, <laughs> you know, and even savings. 
There was mm. a 1% imposition on savings, which was later withdrawn. On investments, yes. On investments, mm. which was later... I mean, even to think about it was... was it's, well, it's, it's been suspended. Yeah, uh, yeah. well, so it's been suspended. I mean, I mean but even to think abolished. about it... Mm. Oh, it's now abolished, yes. is it? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. but even to think about it, mm. it doesn't... It just questions who are making these policies. I mean... But isn't I mean, it just it, another way... Another um, you way know, of raising it, revenue. Well, yes, but when you become desperate, this is what happens, that when you've mismanaged the economy mm. into this hole, then anything sounds great to you because <laughs> you don't have any option. What has happened? If monies which should not be paid have been paid, 12 million is not small money, it's my not. sister. It's not small money. And we are taxing people. Mm. In fact, we are moving the country from taxation to robbery instead of to production that we were promised. Now we are robbing everybody, even your money that... What is the difference between the ordinary thief and a political thief? Number one, the ordinary thief steals your money, your bag, your watch, and your jewelry, isn't it? But the political thief steals your future, your career, your education, your health, and your business. Number two, the hilarious part is that the ordinary thief will choose whom to rob. But you are the one who choose the political thief to rob you. Because we choose them. We vote them. We blindly say we are not blind. Who is deceiving who? The ridiculous part of the whole issue is that we will fight to defend and protect our belongings from the ordinary thief. Is it not? But we fight each other to defend and protect the political thief. Is that not what we do? Thugs will be fighting themselves to protect those that are stealing our career, stealing our job, stealing our health, stealing our success. What a shame. If you reach a certain stage in life and there is nobody who can look you in the eye and tell you the truth, you are doomed. And that is where our country has gotten to. We need to rescue this country. We are lying. And I feel very terrible as a Ghanaian at this time. This country is in serious trouble, ladies and gentlemen. We are in serious trouble. We need to rescue this country, ladies and gentlemen. The presidency has been so depraved, so, so muddied, so dirty, that I tell you in all sincerity as a Ghanaian, that I feel terribly sad today as a Ghanaian. We need to rescue this country. Wallah. Insha Allah. Please don't cry. We shall rescue our country. What is the difference between the ordinary thief and a political thief? Number one, the ordinary thief steals your money, your bag, your watch, and your jewelry, isn't it? But the political thief steals your future, your career, your education, your health, and your business. Number two, the hilarious part is that the ordinary thief will choose whom to rob. But you are the one who choose the political thief to rob you. Government is broke, government is broke. The people are spending billions to go inside the government that is broke. Have you ever seen a minister who resigned because government is broke before? Government has no money. Have you ever seen a governor who said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I was elected, I thought the government had money. Now I discover government has no money, I resign. Have you ever seen it? Government has no money, but they are bringing money out at election time. Where is that money coming from? So they are lying. What is happening is that there are two types of wicked people in government. Type 1, they eat current money. Any money they find in government, they will eat it. They are wicked about that one. There is type 2. Type 2, they eat current money and future money. They will say, ah, oh, um, my term will end next year. When I leave, how will I eat money? Let me borrow money now. I borrow money of the future and eat it now.
Right, hello, good morning, and welcome to the show. This is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV. It's a Friday, the 5th day of April 2024. By His grace, we're live and we're here. We're at another edition of the show. Our gratitude to go to Almost High God for the rare privilege of being alive and, of course, the opportunity of having another conversation around the top stories making around here in our dear Republic. I'll let you into our panel for the morning's conversation shortly, but let's take a look at the front pages of our newspapers, Daily Graphic. Consolidating media leadership, graphic to raise funds on Ghana Stock Exchange. That's according to the MD. Prioritize national peace ahead of December 7 polls. Minister tells election actors. Dr. Baumi advocates local capacity building in health sector. Autism patients can access disability fund. The Ghanaian Times. Don't overrun budgets for projects. Finance minister appeals to MDAs. Rally behind AU to create financial architecture to support African businesses. President Ruto to private sector. Stop escorting associates through security checks at airports. Interior minister cautions immigration officials. FDA destroys 500 bales of substandard baby diapers. Daily Guide. Mama hails free SHS. Baumia pledges support for pharmaceutical industry. Court of Appeal resumes nationwide sitting. Father Ben's daughter's private part. Ghana, fifth best governed country. New weekend crusading guide. Ghana ranked best governed country in West Africa. Minister decries religious stereotyping. Describes Dr. Mahmoud Balmia as Muslim president God will use to prosper Ghana. Newmont Partners Project Cure to help reduce infant mortality. GMPC CEO resigns. Bono East, NPP is best to develop new regions. Asensu Bwachi assures at Suei chief. Transmission lines reliability increased by 50% in parts of Western Region. I'm not supporting, I'm not sponsoring anybody in court against our 2024 candidate, Busumi Freho DC. The insight child marriage in Nungwa, SMG urges presidency, women's ministry in charge to investigate child abuse cases in religious and cultural institutions. Ahead of 2024 polls, Alan's M4C partners Abu Sakara's movement. Lawyers for Teshi Youth Chief rubbish alleged land grab. Iran condemns Israel's atrocities and massacre in occupied Palestine on occasion of International Quds Day. And so one police commander accused of harassment and causing fear and panic in Ekufu Krum. Political parties urged to adopt 2024 Ghana Environment Manifesto. In case of alleged sale of government lands, Niyemo, 11 others acquitted as court orders compensation be paid to them. The Herald. Freddie Blaze presence at GMPC still major headache. Workers' agitation simmering. Impeachment looms. Concerns erupt over Haptel ECG revenue deal as Doomso continues. Afanyo Marki made deputy speaker of ECOWAS Parliament. Abutia chiefs angry over lithium mining in sacred Kalapa Forest. Graphic MD, Atu Afu, fumbles at staff meeting. The informer, MMDC is in arms against Natoshi, big demo imminent. Ejisu by election, NDC not ready. Reduction in poor charges must benefit all. GPH boss edges. Bahamia redeems pledge to Trinity Seminary, cut sort for construction of 200 bed hostel. Please ready to die for Mother Ghana, IGP declares. The Inquisitor. Who partners Bahamia? Scammers on the prowl. At WAGP come meeting at Togo, Napoli trades Ghana's quest for more gas supply for power generation. OSP has been rendered toothless, i.e. ECG commissions transformer injections in Ashanti West to improve power supply. The Daily Statesman, Ghana best governed in West Africa. World Economics Governance Index puts nation fifth in Africa. CJ, the FEMEC boss injunction application was ripe for hearing. NHIA boss outlines four-point vision to revolutionize healthcare. NDP advocates inclusive governance policy. Minister Hill's professionalism of GIS offices. The Daily Searchlight. Ghana ranks first in West Africa, fifth in Africa on World Economics Governance Index. Bahamas slams distribution of tablets to pre-tertiary students. Police officer detained of alleged shooting incident. 
Sacrilege, Parks and Gardens headquarters sold. GRA SML transaction, President persists with lawless probe. The new finder, Judiciary makes bold proposals. One student, one tablet, a misplaced priority, Mahama. GMPC CEO, Poku Arene Damkwa resigns. Dr. Baumia promises to make Ghana pharmaceutical hub in West Africa. Daily Post, Sanitation Ministry ineffective. I'll dissolve it, Mahama. Professor Frimpon Boatin raises concerns by deteriorating state of National Cardiothoracic Center. Baumia's manifesto team member grabs juicy single source 245 million Ghana cities contract, Ablaqua. Fuel prices go up again with petrol selling at 14 cities, 15 pesos per litre. 14 cities, 74 pesos for diesel. The Catholic Standard, anti-LGBTQ plus bill overwhelmingly endorsed by Ghanaians. Bishop Agenta urges its assent. Value human life, respect Ghanaian culture, protect Ghanaian family values, Speaker Bagbin tells traditional authorities. Editorial, Ghana's disappointing tourism centers. Much more has to be done. Vatican to publish documents regarding human dignity, gender, and surrogacy. And the Catholic standard um, informs its uh, cherished readers that the only National Catholic Weekly paper in Ghana, which was established in 1938, has improved its website. So you can go to catholicstandardghana.com. In the coming weeks, readers will be able to subscribe to the electronic version of the paper at a very reasonable cost. All right. So the Catholic Standard ensuring that uh, it is not left behind uh, with the changing face of uh, media in the world. Okay. So the paper has been around since 1938. Wow. We'll be back shortly. Stay strong together. It's good to share nutritious meals cooked with Frital, a vitamin A fortified oil. Frital, you deserve a life of goodness. This advert is FDA approved. In today's modern world, Stairs are a challenge, especially for our elderly and those with health concerns. Navigating them can be difficult and even dangerous, but there's a safer way to move vertically. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, your answer to a more accessible and secure vertical transportation. Our elevators and escalators, including top-of-the-line pneumatic vacuum elevators, Fuji elevators and escalators, offer a safer and more convenient alternative, eliminating the risks of stairs and enhancing accessibility for homes, businesses, and hospitals. Choose safety and convenience with lifts and elevators limited company. Elevate your spaces today. For more information, visit our website at www.elevatorsgh.org or call now on 0200-535-515. Lifts and elevators limited company, the elevator people. Yeah, 
Hey, <laughs> 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 To be honest, I'm so nervous about starting this new role on Monday. Oh, please. I know you'll be very happy. You should be worried about what benefits they had. Example, do they have health insurance? I doubt they will have that for internet. But no shaking. I have NHIs already. Actually, I'm still aligned. Tin, tin, tin. Nina, look at you. What are you going to do in your office when you can just download your app to register for an NHIs membership? Yes, my people. You heard right. You can now download and register your membership on my NHIS app. No long queues or tedious paperwork. All you need is your Ghana card to register for yourself and for others. Once you register, you get a new digital NHIS card on your phone. My NHIS app gives you access to credentialed health facilities and services across the country. NHIS covers over 95% of disease conditions in Ghana. Access to healthcare just got easier. Now let me sign up quickly. Miss Seth, I'm starting work next month. We are back, bringing you the latest lineup from Betway. Betway starts strong with your front two, with free play Friday and swipe bet. In the middle, you've got all the control with cash out and build a bet. Plus, with win boost, you can boost your sports bet. At the back, they have smart picks and the partial daily jackpot. You always get way more with Betway. And and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly. No under 18. Terms and conditions apply. Betway. Get way more. Anti cavity. Dumb protection. Brighter teeth and fresh bread. I'm a fair missy way. The smile, the fresh breath. Me, GD said we use Kel 360 toothpaste. So me kai. Kel 360 toothpaste. Yes, Kia. Kel 360 toothpaste. It's a gum protector. Oh, nim jom kasan kasan kasan. Ki ne ko sen. Kel 360 did the way. It's cool, man. Gives me fresh breath and your confidence booster. Hey, you will see so funny in Kika when you know. Kel 360 toothpaste. Happy. Anti cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh breath. Kill. Happy smile. This advert is FDA approved. The biggest car center in Ghana offering unparalleled round the clock service in autos and accessories. Nadam Autofix is the biggest distributor of used ties in Ghana, offering first grade second hand car ties of all rim sizes at both wholesale and retail prices. We are also the leading name in car sensor diagnostics, corrections, and sales of car accessories. We excel in car washing and detailing with state of the art steam engine washing machines that keep water away from your engine, ensuring a clean, healthy, and responsive engine. Nadam Autofix, the first name in servicing, car accessories, and car washing. Visit us today and experience the world of class difference. Find us today at Asori Daho, directly opposite Dansoman KFC and the Shell Filling Station. For more details, you can call us on 0503-244-266 or 0535-339823. Nado Moto Fix. Wukwainsunyonko pa pa pa.
Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana live on Metro TV. With me on the show this morning as the vice chairman of the Baumia 2024 campaign. And of course, uh, the front runner of the uh, outside Ashanti running mate squad. Nana Komia is here with me on the show. Good morning, Nana. Good morning, Randy. Mm. How are things going? Well, um, today I'm fasting, so... Okay. Your Friday I'm, fast. I'm, uh, no, usually Tuesday, but I, I couldn't do it Tuesday. So you're so doing it My today. piety is at the for- forefront today. Oh, thank you. We thank That's God. why I haven't uh, responded to your appellations. <laughs> <laughs> but, but appellations will take away your piety. <laughs> <laughs> the response will take away your piety. <laughs> anyway, so, 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 so. <laughs> also, we'll be on the show. This body is a man who's been causing a lot of trouble from last week. You know, sometimes he, he lures us into a false sense of... Uh, uh, repentance, you know, and uh, it will go quiet a couple of weeks, just preparing to, you know, launch some arsenals. Uh, okay. So, so he represents the good people of the Northern constituency and is a ranking member of Foreign Affairs. And he's been talking about passports, about um, um, two letters written the same day. When I read those letters, <sighs> and okay. Uh, he's been talking about that. And he's also been speaking about uh, some Kululu in the uh, tech space, mm, the digitalization space. He's all over the place. I'm sure you've seen his watermark and uh, some of those documents, SOA. Okay. So um, he's the son of uh, Ablakwa, <laughs> probably known as the son of man. Sami Okujato Ablakwa. Is here with us on the show. Good morning, Sabi. Hey, good morning, Doc. Good okay. to see you. Good to see you too. Nana wants to know what you've been up to, but good we'll get morning, to that. Nana. We'll get to that oh, shortly. Yeah. So, if you're thinking of getting a toothpaste that will take care of all the family and save money, the recommended family toothpaste is Kel 360 toothpaste. It's approved by the Food and Drugs Authority. Kel 360 toothpaste provides you and your family with all-round dental protection throughout the day with freshness. Kel 360 toothpaste is good for kids, children, and adults. Let your family be a proud family when they step out by constantly using Kel 360 toothpaste. Kel 360 toothpaste brightens your teeth, prevents cavity, and with its cool mint gives you fresh breath throughout the day and protects the gum from decaying. For consistency and quality, use Kel 360 toothpaste. Kel 360 toothpaste is another product from Samara Company Limited, producers of Sasso, and is available in all supermarkets, malls, and provision shops. Call Samara Company on 0246-864-798. Kel 360 Toothpaste, happy smile. And the pains of climbing the stairs when not exercising could be challenging for all ages. But worry no more. Lift and elevators have got you covered with the best portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators on the market today. It's a simple self-supported elevator for both homes and offices. And guess what? It can lift your goods too. Wheelchairs can fit in and they come in three custom-made models. It's affordable. And can be installed within three days. Visit Lift and Elevators at Sakumon or just call them on 0200 535 515 or send a mail to elevatorsgh at gmail.com for consultations and the best solutions in easy vertical movement. All right. So, Sami, let's start Hello. off <coughs> with passports. You are the ranking member of Foreign Affairs. Huh? Yes. And uh, we've been told that um, uh, there's a need for the increment uh, of passports. Apparently, the state has been subsidizing the cost of passports. And um, I was making a point um, early this week, I think it's Tuesday or Wednesday, I was making the point that, look, um, unlike maybe a voter ID card or a Ghana card, a passport is really... Uh, something that you need if you have plans of traveling or you are about to travel. It is not like a, a voter ID card which is issued to you in furtherance of your right to vote or a national ID card which you say that it is something that um, you are entitled to and should be given to you. But when it comes to passports, I mean, why should a state subsidize um, something like passports, especially in a regime 
where you have a Ghana card. I mean, proud to the Ghana card, maybe it could make uh, some sense. And I made the point that elsewhere, there are people who have lived all their lives and they do not have a passport because they've not had a need for a passport. If they don't have to travel, they will not go and get a, a, a passport. But I raise issues with the steep um, um, thing. But it appears that there is some division. Um, the, 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 the ranking member, um, the lawyer Pia Kubi, uh, the Honorable Pia Kubi, has addressed the media. The Deputy Foreign Minister has also spoken. And it appears that they disagree with your views on the passport. Are you, as, as the point you're making, uh, that government should continue subsidizing the cost of passports? Well, thank you for the opportunity, and let me extend uh, warm regards to our viewers. So it is important to emphasize that the whole notion that passports should be reserved for a certain elite category of Ghanaians is what I disagree with. Passports are not a privilege. Mm -hmm. Passports should not be reserved for the wealthy, for those who are rich or who belong to a certain class in society. I vehemently oppose that notion. That has been put at the center of this discussion, and we have to dispel that and demolish it with all the force we can master. There are thousands of students who on a yearly basis get admissions, full scholarship admissions. All they have to do is show up at an embassy with a passport. I would not classify those students as wealthy Ghanaians. Many of them actually get those scholarships because they have made a case that they are brilliant but needy. They are not in elite families who have the means to afford those scholarships. And that is why they have been awarded those scholarships. Those category of Ghanaians are not wealthy. Then you have those who, because of medical conditions, may have to be flown out. You and I know that there are so many medical conditions that we are still building capacity as a country. And there are times that it is advised that you seek experts, medical attention outside. In those circumstances, I wouldn't say that uh, it's a luxury. Passports become a luxury commodity. As ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, there have been times that families have approached us that, look, our relative abroad is in some difficulty or the other. They need a relative to show up there. It could even be disease. Come process and have your body. <clears throat> they are not wealthy. So this whole notion that suddenly passports have become such a rare, wealthy piece of document that should be reserved for a certain privileged few must be demolished. That's the first point I want to emphasize. Then the second point which really just leaves me outraged is the way and manner the Ministry for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration went about this. How did they the go about bad faith, <coughs> the undermine of Parliament and particularly the Foreign Affairs Committee. That is why I am so livid about the approach. You don't treat Parliament, you don't treat your committee according to the standing orders of Parliament. The committee that has oversight, your first point of call is the Foreign Affairs Committee. I hold in my hands here the verbatim report of the proceedings of the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament, dated 12 December 2023. And this verbatim report becomes very, very crucial because during the week, I have been subjected to a barrage of attacks. Some have said that I supported this in secrecy at the committee level, behind the scenes. My public objection to this is hypocritical. 
I'm exhibiting double standards. I've been called all kinds of names. But the verbatim report, what transpired at the Foreign Affairs Committee, will settle this course. So, during the consideration of the estimates for the foreign ministry for the 2024 fiscal year, the, com- the, the ministry appeared before our committee. And, Doc, it was at this committee meeting on the 12th of December 2023 that the ministry raised this matter of increasing passport application fees for the first time. And I'm going to read, with your permission, extracts from this verbatim report. So this is Mr. Amprechum Sapon, Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs, speaking. The, the Foreign Minister walked in later, when you read the, the transcripts, the verbatim report. He says, and I quote, The Ministry is going to appear before Parliament on the issue of passport fees. And I hope that when the time comes, we will look at it. The supply of our passport is bulk press. They also su- supply same to Liberia. Liberia charges $40 for their biometric, and as we speak, it is under review. In Ghana, we pay about $8 per booklet. Mr. Chairman, indulge me because this is a key area. In the whole West African region, Ghana's passport is the cheapest at $7.76, followed by Liberia, $40. Benin is $50. Burkina Faso is $80. It goes on and on. Then I interject. This is Mr. Blackwell. Mr. Chairman, I want the Honorable Deputy Minister to guide me. All the countries he has listed, using, are they using the same biometric and not chip embedded passport? This is very important because I have seen a lot of this generalization, the pick countries and just how much they are charging and they are comparing. But you have to compare like with like. We don't all use the same kind of passports. Some are ahead using chip embedded passports. We are really behind the world using biometric passports. That's what we are using in Ghana. So you can understand that ours will be cheaper. And this is the minister's response. The deputy minister, Honorable Aprichum, says no. So they, they, these countries, they are comparing us with. They are not using the same passports. Then he continues. But that is why I said that Ghana and Liberia use the same supplier, which is bulk press. It is important because we are coming to members. Then the Honorable Dixon Adumako Kisi, a good friend, interjects and says, you will need his support. That's referring to the support of the NDC side. Then the Honorable Aprechu Sapon comes back. He says, he has already given his support. I have had about five meetings with him. Then Patrick Buama, who is short, says, Oh, really? He has given his support. Then I come in. I said, Mr. Chairman, for the record, I told him to bring the proposal so we can assess it. I do not want colleagues to say that I have committed when we have not discussed this matter. Unquote. Then the chairman steps in. That's the Honorable and the Apia Kubi. Honorable members, the Honorable Deputy Minister is seeking our support to move this process. Indeed, it cannot be said that the Ghanaian passport goes for $8, when we cannot break even, and others are selling it at a higher price. If we want to continue giving passports to our citizens, they would have to pay commercial fees for it. A passport is not something everyone uses. You will need it when you want to use it. So I am sure the committee is not divided on this position. We will need to provide passports and they must attract commensurate fees so that our agency can continue to provide the service. If the agency is unable to provide the service, it will mean that not every applicant can get a passport. Then I come back as I'm about to conclude. So, Ukuja Tua Blackwa comes here. I say, Mr. Chairman, I would like to appeal that we go step by step. At this point, we do not have a specific proposal before us. If we go ahead of ourselves and commit the committee, what if they bring $200 or $300 later? We can all appreciate the compelling case that the Deputy Minister has made. However, 
let us have their proposal. Are we going to have one quantum leap? Or will it be graduated? Let us have something before us. Then we can commit. So the chairman comes in and gives the final ruling. Mr. Chairman, speaking now, says, all right, this was something that we threw in. But let us prepare our minds to expect this. And when it comes, all of us should appreciate the problems we have and solve it. Director of Passports, kindly go on. So this is what transpired at the Foreign Affairs Committee. The matter was not concluded. The ministry agreed that they will go put together their proposals and come before us properly. Only for us to hear later that they have bypassed the Foreign Affairs Committee, taking advantage of the fees and charges ally, and just smuggled it in there. When the Foreign Affairs Committee was waiting for their proposal, Doc, do you know that this business of subsidy, subsidy, and you made reference to it, do you know that as a ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, I cannot vouch for this claim? How? Because if you go through all the budget estimates, line by line, of the Foreign Ministry, throughout the seven years I've served on the committee, you will not see a single year that there is passport subsidy there. So I ask the question, where is the subsidy coming from? You see, inherent in our passport application fees structure is a certain cross-subsidy. So you see, the wealthy category of applicants who ask for premium service, VIP service, expedited service, who ask for bigger passports, the 48-page booklet, which is higher than the 32-page booklet which goes for every ordinary Ghanaian, they pay more. Far more. And my understanding always, and I spoke to the Honorable Hannah Tete about this, the former foreign minister, is that that is what is used to subsidize the rest. So you're saying that <clears throat> so you're saying that you have not seen I haven't seen anywhere in the budget of the The Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Even when they meet you as a committee yes. to say that we this need is X amount of yes, money to subsidize, to subsidize because yes. maybe it costs us Y exactly to pay for the passports and we get X Exactly. In terms of the costing. Exactly. You've not seen it. Never seen either. it. It doesn't exist. Now, in making a case for this increment, did the ministry not make that case? No, so, apart from the comparison <coughs> with how yeah. much other countries pay, yeah. did they not do an analysis of how much it costs? So, they didn't. So, you see, they, they just raised this matter on the sidelines of the budget approval for the 2024 fiscal year. Mm -hmm. They were not prepared. That is why we concluded, if you look at the Verbeti report, that they have to go and prepare and come back to us. That's a separate matter we must consider. And they agreed. That was the agreement. That they will come back so that they bring this analysis. Because I asked, if you read this Verbeti report, I'm hearing subsidies for the first time. What is that figure? They can tell us. If you ask any Foreign Affairs Committee member now, today, how much bulk pack figure? Is it 10 million, 20 million, 100 million? One billion that government claims to be spending on subsidizing passport. Nobody can tell you. Let, let me find um, um, something out from you. And it's also good that we have an experienced MP here, mm -hmm. a former MP as well. Now, the fees and charges, yeah. government fees and charges, yeah. are approved by parliament. Yes. So, for example, when we had the controversy with respect to the dialysis unit, mm -hmm. Kolebu made a case yes. that, look, this is how much we charge. This is how much it costs to get in uh, um, the, the, the dialysis. The, yes, yes. The, the dialysis consumables. Yes, yeah. the consumables. This is how much it costs. Yeah. And so if this is how much we're charging and this is how much it costs us, there is this gap. We either must adjust the price or somebody must pay for that difference. Mm -hmm. And that, for me, was the basis for asking for the incrementing the fees mm -hmm. and of course the charges. Yeah. Now, I would expect that for every government agency or institution that is covered by these fees and charges, that makes a case to parliament for an increment, that there will be a justification. And that justification, one of the key things will be 
the issue of the cost as against the price exactly. as a basis for exactly yes exactly and are you, are you saying that exactly. in the case of the passport this has not been done it's not been done it's not been done so how come parliament approved it's not it? been done it's not, that is why we stood it down this verbatim report is here that is why at the foreign affairs committee we stood this down so how did they pass and the chairman's ruling was that they should go and come back later because if you ask me today as ranking member of the foreign affairs committee how much is that something i can't tell you how much does it cost to print a passport i can't tell you and you know what is worse doc mm. for almost 10 years ghana has been preparing to introduce a cheap embedded passport this current increments is it for the existing biometric passports which appears to be the case which we are fading out the foreign minister has announced that in six months she is hoping that we will introduce the cheap embedded passports, which Ghana should have done many years ago. The Honorable Hannah Tete had almost concluded the process, but of course, procurement wranglings and all of that, and uh, this regime was set to, you know, you know, set all of us back. Now, will this new fee structure be reviewed? Or is this being done in anticipation? It's just a mess. So, on these matters, you must present all the facts. Be transparent. Let us know what the issues are. Come properly before us. But this business of, you know, exhibiting bad faith. You come to the Foreign Affairs Committee, the matter is stood down. We raise concerns. You notice that in my submission, I was even asking that if even after you brought us the financials, the analysis and all of that, and there has to be an increment, will it be graduated or it will be a one-off in just one fell swoop? We asked all these questions. And it was clear that we are not there yet. Then, when you walk out of this committee, you go and take advantage of the fees and charges and, like, and just smuggle in these figures. And you see, the Honorable and the Apia Kubi is the only one who had the advantage of having sat at the Foreign Affairs Committee as chairman, and he's a member of subsidiary legislation. He should have brought into the attention of subsidiary legislation that this matter has not been properly discussed. The Foreign Affairs Committee has not delved into it. We are not convinced that a case has been made and even if it should go up, by what quantums? How should the increment be? At a time that Ghanaians are faced with a cost of living crisis, unprecedented, for the first time we are going through a domestic debt exchange program. It's never happened in our country's history. Is this a time that you should be just increasing passports with this model? You couldn't even consider a graduated approach, as we recommended. That even after you brought the financials and we have considered and we think that you've made a case, that should be the path forward. So, bad faith. The matter is not concluded. So, you see, the shabbiness and shadiness with which, you know, some public officials attend to their work is nauseating. It's unacceptable. And we all know that when these allies are laid, another matter that People have said, oh, okay, uh, so they dribbled the Foreign Affairs Committee, went to subsidiary legislation, and um, the airline was late. Why didn't you rise and stop it? Again, with all due respect, a certain lack of ignorance. When an airline is late, I, one man, can stand up and stop it. You need two thirds of members of parliament. That is the constitution. That is the law of the land. When an airline is late, it's a moving train. The only way you can stop it is to marshal two-thirds of MPs. NDC MPs are not two-thirds. It's 137, 137. That's the composition of the house. So this business that, oh, it was late. We didn't see him standing up to stop it. You know, that should have been some Hercules rising up in the middle of the chamber, stopping this airline. It's not possible. So, <laughs> this is a lot of hubris out there. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to cut all of that out. Look, 
the government may have a case that there is the need for some increments. It's not been done in a long time. They probably slept on the job and for more than seven years have not paid attention to passport application fees. But why punish the people for that? For your sloppiness and your, 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 your lack of industry and enterprise at your job. The other matter about the exchange rate. Why punish Ghanaians for your inability to manage the exchange rate? Why? So, um, other countries have a better exchange rate regime. You do a comparison and then you just come and slap it on Ghanaians. Are you not the ones who said you are better managers of the economy? And that you understand the, the fundamentals really of the economy is about managing the exchange rate. We're waxing lyrical in opposition. So why punish Ghanaians because of your inability to manage the exchange rate? It doesn't make sense to me. So this whole approach has been bundled, it's been handled horribly. There is even no empathy. And if you listen to how ministers are talking, look, it's becoming too much. The insults, the condescension, the denigration. The last time the energy minister told us we can go and create our own timetable if we think that doing so is disturbing us. I mean, the cheek of it. How do you talk to I mean, sovereignty resides in the people? Without the people, you don't have political power. Now listen to all the foreign ministers. Oh, if uh, you can buy tickets, tickets are expensive. You can buy tickets, uh, you should be able to pay anything for passport. You don't talk to citizens like that when they are complaining, when they are saying that what you have done is excessive. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't do that. I right. don't say that, oh, if, if you, uh, passports are not compulsory, if, if you can't pay, stay away from it. I mean, don't talk like that. Don't talk like that. So, we are the Foreign Affairs Committee, particularly the NDC MPs. We are outraged. And when the House resumes, we will be summoning the minister. Why do you exhibit such bad faith? The matter was not concluded. You said you were going to come back. That's what the verbatim report of 12 December 2023. That was the conclusion. You were going to come back before us to come with your financials. This so-called subsidy, what is the figure? Is it true? Then we look at the numbers. All these countries you are comparing us with, they are not using the same passports. And then in printing, some of the countries they list, you know the population. So Benin, Togo, a lot of these countries are not even up to the size of Accra. You know that the more you print, the less are the costs and all of that. We know these things. As I conclude, the elephant in the room is also procurement. Do you know that, Doc, this whole passport printing business, we don't really open it up and let it be competitive? And that is at the bill of a lot of the costs, the, things that, mean, we have to, the, the, the things that we have to pay more for mm, in this country. We could be paying less if we do competitive tendering, if we allow the procurement process to be competitive. We don't want to talk about these things. Why should it be that, you know, a set, just one entity, this is reserved for them. It is their gig. We are carving out this country. And when we come to digitalization, you see some of these things carving out this country for certain business interests. Why? And then it is the ordinary Ghanaian who suffers. Why can't we open up the process? Let's have a competitive... Were these people not the ones who promised us that when they come, they will end the era of sole sourcing, the era of single sourcing? All these matters should be looked at. We were expecting that they will bring all of these matters, the full gamut of issues, holistically. Then we do the analysis. Look at procurement. If it's competitive, what, do, what will we get from it? Certainly there will be more value for money. Competition will drive down prices. But there's no competition. So there are so many issues that we need to discuss about this matter. Mm. The matter is not properly brought to parliament. It has not been crystallized. Then you just smuggle it into, the, into an airline, knowing that once you lay the airline, 21 days, it matures. Mm. You present parliament with a fair accompli. Mm. You treat your committee shabbily. And you want us to support you, to cooperate with you. Mm. I, won't, I won't take this disrespect mm. as ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee. All right. <coughs> that, 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 that,
we, 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 we to, need your experience. I've been trying to understand uh, Samuel Kujeto's uh, anger. Okay. I can't. I can't see what you didn't get it at the tail end. No, no. I have I, throughout his submission, I'm trying to see what he's talking about. I don't mm. get it. Mm. He says that people didn't. That's the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. They didn't come properly before Parliament. Mm. How is that possible? How, how did they get it through? I, I don't understand it. Even if you haven't. Well, been, you didn't hear me when I read the verbatim report second, of the proceedings of the committee. No, no. So, where did they go? Mm. They went to subsidiary committee, uh, legislation. legislation. Committee. That committee is actually the committee where the minority, Samuel Kujeto's colleagues, have a majority. Mm -hmm. That is the committee where the chairman is a member of the minority. Mm -hmm. They are in charge of subsidiary legislation. And that is where they went to. And the entire parliament, it, it, this, even the committee cannot approve or disapprove. It has to come to the entire parliament. So when you say the people didn't come properly before parliament, what are you talking about? When you say they, they, they've been, they've, they, they, what they do was shabby, they've been not sitting and you know, using this term to describe the ministry because you say they didn't come properly before. Where did they go? Did they go to the Council of State? They went before Parliament. So parliament I don't, I don't, I don't understand this business of they've smuggled. How can the ministry smuggle something before Parliament? Parliament is chaired by a speaker who is a member of the minority. So this effort to denigrate the ministry and Parliament, I don't understand it. Or you believe that it should come before your committee, the Foreign Affairs Committee. Even if it comes before the Foreign Affairs Committee, that committee is chaired by the member of the majority. Yes. And the, and the majority of the members of that committee are members of the majority. Mm -hmm. So I would think that for accountability purposes, the subsidiary legislation where the chairman is a member of the minority and the majority of the members on that committee come. It's a, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a committee that is also placed to consider these things. But it would eventually come before the entire house. In what form? The committee will make its recommendation. So like they present a report? Yes. Not the laying of an uh, ally? If, if it's laid before parliament, it goes to a committee. Mm -hmm. And if the committee doesn't have any objection, mm -hmm. the entire parliament will just let it go. Mm. Samuel Kujeto's beef, if I understand him, mm. I'm trying to understand, is that it should have come before the Foreign Affairs Committee. It came before us. They oh, brought yes. it. The minister. Before the Foreign Affairs yes. Committee. And, and then it, later, who and, took it to subsidiary? And it was not concluded. They were to come back okay. with their financials, Fine. their analysis, Fine, no and all of that. This and, la of and later, who took it to subsidiary committee? Whilst we were waiting for them to come back to yes. us. Yes. Then we heard that they've gone to the subsidiary legislation. The ministry took it to the subsidiary legislation committee. Does the ministry have the leverage to go to the committee they like? Yeah, that's what is the, this is a mandate from the executive. So that's what they did. Sam, Samuel Kujato. Yes, that's what happened. Samuel Kujato. Let's, let's not fight. Does we, are the not, we are not fighting. Does the executive mm -hmm. have the leverage to choose some committee that they like in parliament? When, when it comes to allies, they are bringing fees and charges allies. They would be advised where to take it. So that's what they did. No, no. Can the executive say that as for this thing, we are taking it to this committee? That's what happened the in this case. The matters before parliament, I refer to committees by the speaker. This, no, this matter was not referred so, 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 to so, the so, subsidiary just, legislation just, by just the speaker. A minute, just hold on a minute. When it comes to fees and charges, the subsidiary legislation committee is the one that is closed with jurisdiction. Is that yes. so? Yes. Okay, okay. Now, Sami is saying that mm -hmm. the Foreign Affairs Committee came before them yes. mm -hmm. on yes. a lot of issues. Now, this issue of the increment in passports then came up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the committee level, they asked questions. Mm -hmm. And the promise was that they were going to get back to them yes. on those issues. Mm -hmm. And that the chair, from what he read, yeah. 
the chairman himself, that yes. was the conclusion yes. mm -hmm. that the ministry was going to come back to them with a justification yeah. for the increase. For the increase, for the increase. Okay. yes. So mm -hmm. it wasn't as if this meeting was specifically for the increase. Yeah. Yes. It was for, for other all things. kinds of issues. Yes. But the issue of the increase came up yes. mm -hmm. from the ministry itself. Mm -hmm. And then the members asked questions, including yourself. Yeah. And then the decision was that they should come back yeah. with a justification mm -hmm. and then the committee will take a decision. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what the chairman said. Now, your point is that this comeback has mm -hmm. not happened. Yes. Mm -hmm. The justification has not happened as far yes. as the committee is concerned. Exactly. But the increment in fees and charges, which is handled by the subsidiary legislation mm -hmm. committee, has happened. Yes. They've gone there. Whether they made a justification or they've gone there. Yeah. The committee has looked at it. The committee has presented it to Parliament. Lady Ella. Yes. And then it's gone to Yes. After twenty one days it's yes. matured. Yes. Yes. Meanwhile, so, so, meanwhile foreign affairs so committee legally, is still waiting. Okay, so legally and procedurally, the ministry may not have done wrong. Because they've gone mm -hmm. through the appropriate channel mm -hmm. for fees and charges. Mm -hmm. But your your point is that your committee let's and yourself things, Yes, let's do things properly. You've been shortchanged and exactly. you've undermined them. Yes, we've been undermined. Okay. Yes. And, and, that is, and that the is fact the that you are being accused yes. of having sat there yes. and the, and the committee was Yes, and some were saying that we even approved so, it secretly and uh, we didn't ask these questions that we are asking so, publicly. Which, so, which are all so blatant we have, lies. We have established that the ministry did not smuggle anything. They were supposed they, to they, come they, back they, to they, the foreign affairs committee. This, this was supposed, supposed, supposed. I don't understand it. Let supposed me, by who? This is the chairman's ruling on the matter. Do you want to the, get the chairman of the committee of the foreign affairs committee? Who, who took it to the subsidiary committee? The minister. The minister has the leverage to take a report or a, a business of the ministry to any committee they like. Is that what happens? The executive. When they bring anything to parliament, they decide that as for this matter, we are taking it. We brought appointments. As for this one, we are taking it to the committee on labor. No, but Nana, so, I, I, I don't, I don't get, Nana, I don't get you. Because your effort to say that there was the ministry had smuggled something. Are you telling and me that gone you, to some that committee they like? That is not what happens in parliament. Any reference to a committee is done by the speaker on the basis of. The jurisdiction and we, of have that a, we have established, yes, yes, we have established that the, when it comes to fees and charges, mm -hmm. it is this committee that handles it and it's gone to that committee. Okay. So, what's your problem? So, so Nana, are you not worried? <laughs> are you also not worried? <laughs> Nana, I'm that so disappointed. In there you. is a committee that has oversight over a ministry. Yeah. The ministry goes before the committee. Mm. The issue of the fees, intention, the fees. The mm -hmm. intention mm -hmm. to increase the fees comes up. Mm -hmm. The committee asks for a justification. Mm -hmm. The ministry is unable to provide it at that point. Mm -hmm. The ruling of the, on the matter mm -hmm. by the chair, which was not opposed to by the ministry, mm -hmm. was that go come back and finish us with a justification. Mm -hmm. That has not been done. Mm -hmm. However, the um, application for the increment in fees and charges it's been made to parliament, it's gone to the relevant committee, it's mm -hmm. been approved. Mm -hmm. Are you not worried about what has happened at the Foreign Affairs Committee? There is absolutely no worry. Okay. It went before the appropriate committee of parliament. The ministry cannot choose a committee like we have established. It is that committee that is seized mm -hmm. with the responsibility of dealing with fees and charges. Mm -hmm. Not the Foreign Affairs Committee. Mm -hmm. Not the Foreign Affairs Committee. Mm -hmm. And indeed, when they went before, unless you want to say that that committee did a shoddy job. When they went before that committee, didn't they provide justification? I would be surprised if they, you went to that committee with, uh, to approve new fees and charges and they wouldn't ask you for justification. Mm -hmm. So, I don't understand why Samuel Kujato says that because foreign affairs, it hasn't come to foreign affairs in the nation underhand. Shady, it shabby, and so. it was not concluded. Now, now, if your I'm argument saying, is anything to go second. by, why did the ministry present I, this I, to I, us? I'm, why did they make the proposal to us? And so, when they presented it to you, who took the matter to subsidiary? 
So the proper procedure has been followed. As far as fees and charges are concerned. As far as fees and charges are concerned. How has that been followed? As far as fees and charges are concerned. This is your effort to beat the ministry and ascribe bad motives is so sad. Mm. It's unfortunate. You haven't been fair to the ministry. It is your analysis which now, is unfortunate no, no, and, and the unfair. It is based on <laughs> facts. The committee that is seized with the responsibility dealt with it. Your oversight committee dealt with your it. oversight committee has ruled on the matter. You don't that, have that, 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 that come back. You agree. This is the Honorable Amprechum speaking. It says can the I ministry is going I, to appear before Parliament can, can on I this issue. Can I finish? And the, I hope that when the time comes, you will give us your support. Okay. That now, is the, you see, the I, ministry's I think, response. One second. Mm. I think with mm. my little this is bad faith. In mm. But on the part of who? The ministry. Because they took it to subsidiary. Yeah, why the rush? If you have nothing no, to hide, no, why the rush? No, it says, it it says to the extent that why the they rush? promise the committee. Yes, that you will come back to us. But if they promise why, 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 why the rush? Back, what stops them from coming back? They will come back. After, but af are, after the fact. The action they took. After the, the ally has matured. It's not the ministry. After the ally has matured. Can I? It's not the ministry that took the action. The ministry cannot on its own volition go to subsidiary. Can they do that? That's what they did in this instance. No, can they do that? That is what if the record shows. If the matter hasn't been referred. That's, that's what, what they did. So with your experience in Parliament, that's, you are telling that's us. That's what they did. You are asking us to believe that the executive can bring something to Parliament and take it to a committee they like. No, How but, is that possible? No, but the, the job description of every committee is clear cut. Listen. Yes. So if the executive yes. presents something about appointments. Yes. It will be presented to Parliament, but it is for the appointments they, committee. Yes, and if they present something on fees and charges, mm. it will go to the fees and charges committee. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. You may have an interest in it because of your oversight. Yes. But the appropriate committee to deal with fees and charges is, is where it, it went to. So where is the bad faith? Where is all this no, the bad, bad faith, Dana, The issue of bad faith. That's mm. why when I tried to summarize the thing, what I said was that the ministry would have gone through what is legally the due process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fees and charges. It sends to parliament, it goes to uh, subsidiary legislation, they do it. Mm -hmm. But to the extent that the ministry itself went to raise it at the oversight committee, mm -hmm. they were asked questions about it. Mm -hmm. They decided that they would come back. Mm -hmm. In fact, they went to raise that because they were soliciting the support of the oversight mm -hmm. committee. Yeah, yeah. And then the ruling at the committee level was that you come mm -hmm. back with a justification. Yes. So that if we, we can then no, to catch. yes, the foreign affairs committee does not have the power to approve his sentence. Not not for approval. No, 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 yes. Nobody so, has said that. So so even when they come to you with justification or whatever, you still don't have the power. So the best thing that, and this is where the the, the government of the matter is, mm. the best thing in my view mm. that a speaker would have done. Mm -hmm was referred the matter to a joint committee. But well, that's not done. So, that's but, not done. But, but, so that the fees and charges is some I'm not saying, plenty. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying big, so it shouldn't go to foreign affairs. But mm -hmm. if foreign affairs, because of their oversight, and it's about uh, this thing, the speaker could say on this matter, let, let there be a joint committee. The speaker refers matters to joint committees, adult committees, and so on. But you don't blame the ministry of underhand dealing and shabbiness and all of that when they've gone through the right procedure so and, if the, and the and the matter that went to the uh, subsidiary it's yeah. not the ministry that went to subsidiary so then if, if, you, hear, if you hear officials of the ministry <laughs> mm -hmm. and members of the majority side on the committee mm -hmm. on the basis of Okujato's objection say that the issue came to committee the committee secretly approved it. It was unanimously approved. The issue was which handled. committee? Foreign Affairs Committee. Okay. Yeah, that's if what you hear, who, who says so? Those that's what they were saying. Yeah. That, that look, what he's saying, he mm. could have he had the opportunity of raising it. Yes. The issue even came before the committee. The committee secretly approved it and yeah. all that. Yeah. I mean, and then he has this document. No. So the people who are saying so are mistaken. Because they imagine that the Foreign Affairs Committee is the committee that is seized with the responsibility. That's why when Nukuja told me, they say, but you are there. But it's not the Foreign Affairs Committee. Mm. It is the subsidiary legislation. Mm. And, and you see, what is funny about this matter is 
the subsidiary legislation committee mm. is a committee chaired by the NDC. Mm. The majority of the members on that committee are NDC. So if even I am a minister and I want something done for me, I would prefer a committee and I'm a, 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 a committee chaired by the NPP. And the Foreign Affairs Committee is chaired by the NPP. Yeah, the majority but, of the members it, it, it doesn't approve. But is it so? Let's. But is it that's going to be my my yeah. uh, my main point is that mm. I can be partial to the call that they increment from a hundred cities to five hundred cities. That's uh, four hundred percent or so. It's steep. Five hundred first time, sir. So. Yeah, five hundred percent mm. coming uh, uh, at once. It's steep. And so, um, maybe if it had been graduated, it would have been easier on, for, the, on, uh, for the applicants. That would be fair. An increment of 500% in one soup, even if it's from two cities to four cities, <laughs> it's not, mm. you know, it's 100, it's in terms of percentage, yeah. each. But what are we talking about? I'm talking about cost recovery. Has a case of what been made figure, for that? Of what figure? You see? Sami, first recovery of what figure? No, but Samuel you, you, you said earlier that you don't even know. Yes. One second. You don't even know if there is a subsidy. It says oh, it's not seen, not seen in the yes, last seven years. But the fact that you haven't seen doesn't mean that there's no subsidy. So you give it to us. Yeah, so you can ask for it in we, the budget. We did. Yes. But, Randy, all you have to do is to interrogate the printer. Explain that. The printer who is printing the passport booklets. Why do you interrogate? He says it's 400 cities. You can bring him to, to your committee. It depends on because the Because the ministry... The and, ministry and the contract the you have with him and how he was procured. The ministry is saying, no, you are interested in subsidy. Subsidy means that the, the service is being charged at below cost. Shouldn't it start? Then shouldn't it start from, for example, the ministry telling us that it cost us X amount to print a booklet, mm -hmm. and we charge Y amount. Mm -hmm. So there is always this gap, which we subsidize. But the ministry has said so. The ministry has said it costs four hundred CDs to print a booklet, mm -hmm. and we charge a hundred. So for every booklet that is given out, mm -hmm. there's a subsidy of three hundred CDs. Where, where and, is it? and so, so how, how is that? Where is the evidence? Yes. And Sonia yes. is saying that he's not aware of that. Yes. Yeah. I'm saying that the ministry says that the printer charges 400 cities. Mm. So you can just interrogate the printer, mm. bring your cost, and let's see if indeed you are charging 400 cities. Because the ministry is saying the booklet is 400 cities, and we are adding 100 cities for. Uh, 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 administration. I have said that the five hundred percent is steep at the go. But, at the go. Mm. but you see, for the average passport applicant, you want to get your passport without hassle. Today, as we speak, unless there are some really powerful people like you. Mm like me, mm. who has some of your power, mm. and Samuel Kujato, who is the standing uh, ranking member on uh, foreign, foreign affairs, affairs, very powerful. Mm. Yes. I'm not powerful. Otherwise, I the, can't, I, the I can't, ordinary... I can't even get a subsidy figure for, for passports. I'm not powerful, I beg you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling for information. Please, please, please. Don't come and give me powers I don't have. <laughs> I'm being undermined and treated with contempt. Ah, right. Please, record it. Yeah, you say I'm Samuel powerful. Kujato, don't be modest. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, please. Oh, yes, okay. Oh, Wonders please. happen. We are yes. still in Easter. I have now, no power, clearly. Now, <laughs> the problem is that Getting your passport is fraught with so many difficulties. I remember the minister, your Kobotri, going to the passport office too, really was very upset. Mm. And when I saw the clip, I said, what is the minister talking about? Mm. When you have that difference, the Goro business will thrive. Mm. It's just common sense. If you don't close the gap, 
And your people, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, have, you don't have the booklets because you are not recovering costs. The black, the Goro market will thrive. Mm. Everywhere, if you do that, the Goro market will thrive. So when you are, the cost of producing a passport is 450 cities, let's say, mm. and you are charging mm. 100 cities, you will not be able to generate money to buy the passport booklets and do all the administrative things to meet the demand. Mm. And when you happen so, what have you done? You have created a market for the gold. Mm. This is simple common sense. Mm. You create a market for the Goro business. Ask yourself, the Goro boys, who will give you a passport in one day if you pay them a thousand cities? Which people sign those passports? It's the same officials who will give you three months. And they are signing passports that go through in one day. It's the same people. So when I heard the minister expressing the anger, I'm, I'm like, but why wouldn't she look at the signatures on those? Mis, mis, it's called misplaced aggression. W one day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what Samuel Kujia is doing this morning. You know, when you, when you take the one day passport and look at the signatures. <laughs> signatures of people will be there. And ask them, how are you able to sign passports? The application of which is just two days. Ask them. Their signatures are there. They go robots. They don't sign their passports themselves. So what you need is to recover the cost. An essential public service, which you know, I can understand government trying to do some subsidy, you know, but not passports. Of course, passport is not for the privilege, like Sami said, but and Sami mentioned, you know, people will be sick and you need... That's the more reason why the system should be that you can get your passport on time. So, what we need to do... But and, and you, that, you believe that the price increment will lead to... That's what I'm, I'm saying. What we need to do, mm. Sami Okujeto and his collaborators, where they need to focus their energy mm. is to... And this is where their oversight mm. will be useful to get the ministry to commit hmm, mm. to a chapter that will say, you pay your 500 cities, is it two days, one week? The applicant is given one week, they get their passport in one week. If that service chapter fails, you would have to hold the ministry or the passport office accountable. Mm. So that if the if the committee <coughs> with a powerful ranking member like him can have open their arms so that Ghanaians can has go been dribbled, you are calling him powerful. He says he's been what? He's been dribbled and you are calling him powerful. Who dribbled? <laughs> No, I sit there as a committee waiting for them he to has come it, back. He hasn't, he believes. So, so no. he can interrogate figures. No, no, no. <laughs> he, he believes he has been dribbled. Actually, you should, he, he you should, you should add Poso to the dribbling. <laughs> Chief, you are playing <laughs> number four. As you should, as you should. Listen, no. <laughs> no, no. Come on, come on, Chief. You are playing number four. Huh? The, the attacker takes the ball to number three and dribbles number three. Yes. If you like. How does that go Where's number four? Is then you say, oh, you should have brought <laughs> <laughs> You haven't been dribbled. Is you who believe that? <laughs> the ball didn't pass your side. No, no. To, oh, to, but the ball came. To, to, I had the ball. <laughs> and we all agreed that. Do you know? Do you, has blown the whistle. So. Do you know of the dummy pass? So, uh, uh, Hold on. Then why I shall have like? <laughs> 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 Oh my goodness. So oh, who's your toe damage? <laughs> <laughs> you should watch more football and see how the, uh, 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 the, the messages and how they do. You know, it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Samuel Pietro has not been dribbled. He <laughs> believes that the ball should have come to him and then the ball went to number three. But for me, I'm not all of this. Hey, let's speak for the applicant, the Ghanaian citizen. The turmoil they go through to get a passport. And recently, I mean, a close relative of mine wanted a passport. And she came and told me that a, 
They said she should come back in three months. And she wanted my intervention. And of course, I had intended. I asked her, what I we said, oh yeah, we are going to this function. It's going to take place, so three months will be eight. Um, I had the intention to see what I could do. But I got distracted. And I think they went somewhere else. And they got it on time. Thousands of applicants are going through this. Because when you go and you pay your hundreds, they give you a time that the password will be ready. Isn't it? Three months. Four months. Maybe your, yours is a medical issue. It's a, it's a meeting that's going to take place in, in another three weeks. Your interest is that if they say pay 500 cities, you get your passport in one week. That becomes the charter that should be enforced. And if the committee of, of foreign affairs having oversight can open their arms so citizens can go to the committee and say, this is my receipt. I paid my 500 cities. This is where I'm supposed to get my passport in one week. I didn't get it. Then all of us will support the committee in calling the passport office or the ministry and dealing with them. The interest of the public is to ensure that the hassle mm. is taking out mm. passport. And I'm saying, if you price this thing, unless, of course, we want to subject their pricing, I don't have a problem. But if we take the ministry's word and they are paying 400 and they are selling at 100, it's not going to be sustainable. The black market or the guru system will thrive. Mm. That's what is happening. That, that, so the interest now is to make sure that now that the ministry says that these are the realistic fees. We have to ensure that they live up to their mm. responsibility mm. to deliver the service, mm. the passport. So, so, so the Honorable Kofi Adams, MP for Buem, yeah. he sends this one. He says, until our last meeting, is he a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee? Mm. Kofi Adams, okay. He says, until, or is in uh, subsidiary legislation. He says, until our last meeting, the Chairman of Foreign Affairs Committee, Honorable Andy Apia Kubi, was the ranking of the subsidiary legislation committee. Currently, he is a member of the subsidiary legislation committee. Considering his ruling on the matter, when it came before the Foreign Affairs Committee, that the ministry must come again, and his subsequent defense of the hike in passport fees, suggests the chair failed in getting his committee to play its oversight role. Usually... The chair of which one? The chair of Foreign Affairs. Foreign Affairs. Foreign Affairs. He says that yeah. until our last meeting, the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, so this, the Kofi must be a member of subsidiary legislation. He says, yeah. until our last meeting, the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Honorable Andy Apia Kubi, was the ranking of subsidiary legislation committee. Currently, is a member of subsidiary legislation. Considering his ruling on the matter, when it came before the Foreign Affairs Committee, that the ministry must come again, and his subsequent defense of the hike in passport fees, suggests the chair failed in getting his committee to play its oversight role. Usually, before matters get to subsidiary legislation committee, the committee with oversight of the relevant ministry or agency is first seized with the matter. And when they are satisfied with the principles and reasoning, it gets laid and referred to the subsidiary legislation for consideration. Clearly, the relevant committee with oversight did not conclude its work. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Well, well, brilliant. No, no. What, what, is, what is Kofi Adams talking about? Mm. Two it, things. It, it was getting to my mm. turn. Two things. Mm. If the committee with oversight has to deal with the matter first, and in this, I'm just thinking, and then after that is referred to the, the committee for when it's fees and charges. Mm. And if the committee with oversight, which is foreign affairs, with the ranking member being the powerful Samuel Kujeto, mm. they haven't finished with the matter and the principles. Mm. Who referred it to subsidiary? Mm -hmm. Who referred it to subsidiary? Mm -hmm. Because the ministry on their own cannot go to subsidiary mm -hmm. without the reference. Mm -hmm. Number two, this business, he was talking about Andia Piakubi. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the matter that Andia Piakubi raised at the Foreign Affairs Committee? The justification. Yes, that, it, that the ministry should come should back come to the committee. Yeah. Yes. When they went to subsidiary, didn't they offer justification? No. Even from, me, from even, what we have got it. Even me good. sitting outside parliament, I have heard their justification. That a booklet costs 400 cities. Me, sitting outside, I've heard it. I guess the point Kofi is making is that 
to the extent that the chairman made that ruling yeah. at the Foreign Affairs Committee, and he sits on subsidiary legislation, mm -hmm. And the ministry had not come back to the, the yeah. oversight committee. Yeah. He should yeah. have told, that that the he should have told them that, look, yeah. when you came before the oversight, yeah. this was the decision. You were supposed to come well, up with your justification. Uh, you didn't do that. Once Apia Kubi is not here. Oh, yes. So yes. We are just yeah. looking. But yes, I'm yes, saying yes. that Apia Kubi, as chairman of foreign affairs, mm. he asked for justification. He went to, sub he's also a member of subsidiary. And, yes. I, I, and I'm sure. There are a few more members who are cross members of this committee. Mm. He would not be only, the only one. It would be like two or three or four. I think he's the only one. one. The Foreign Affairs yeah. Committee is the only one there. In, in, in the, in but, but he's there in a very big way because he's chairman of Foreign Affairs, the Oversight mm. Committee. So if there was any uh, lack of information or whatever, he would have brought it up at the subsidiary committee. But from what you have, yourself have told us, what you wanted was justification. And when the ministry went before the subsidiary, they offered justification. In fact, it would be amiss on the part of the subsidiary affairs, subsidiary legislation committee, chaired by the NDC, majority members of the NDC, mm. not to ask for justification. All right, okay. So, so, so let's just wrap up on this one. We yes. need to take a break here. Yeah. yeah, so very quickly. Let me emphasize that in this country, we like to make simple governance matters look like witchcraft. That's what you are doing. That's what Dana Kumia is doing. Mimo. <laughs> look, what, 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 what will... I'm making a what, 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 please, please, can I... What, what will be amiss? What will go wrong uh -huh. if your oversight committee has ruled Come back to us. Bring your justification. Don't you think that if you had done that before going to subsidiary legislation, even the policy credibility crisis you are having today would have been avoided? The mistrust. And you see, when you are in the governance space, it's, well, not, only, the, it's, not, it's only about you and your opponent. Credibility. I don't understand. What is that? You don't? What is that? This whole policy to increase the passport application fees. Yeah. It lacks credibility. You have not got the public and, behind and, you. And if you are coming there's, for public, there's public uh, outrage. Uh, one please, can I, when you are speaking, please write it down. Write it down. Yeah, you write it down. Please. <laughs> please. You keep doing that and you will my thoughts. Please, I will yes. give you I'm space. I'm sorry, I your thoughts. So, mm. let me write it down. If you had done that, mm. which is best practice, that is what good governance dictates. Mm. That's what happens elsewhere. All these democracies we admire. Because they respect structures, respect institutions, respect the people. If you had come back, brought your justification, brought your financials, this claim of subsidies, you brought evidence. Nana says he's sitting outside, he has heard. You just heard that oh, it costs us uh, uh, 400, but we are. Where is the evidence? Has, has, Nana, has he seen any evidence of anything? Doc, do you know that in this discussion we are having, all these claims are fallacious? Why? Because the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, has signed a contract mm -hmm. with Buck Press mm -hmm. many years ago. It is that contract that they are applying. Which year was this? It is that contract. No, do you remember which year? I, I, I don't have the contract here, so I don't want to get it wrong. But many years ago. And they themselves said, when they came to us, mm -hmm. I remember the earlier quotation. Mm -hmm. they said that, and they said that, uh, Ampre Chum said that Buck Press is, is the one, is it the supplier of our password is Buck Press. Mm -hmm. And they supply same to Liberia. Is here. So it is not as if they print, they go and print at current price. But is the, is the contract, that is contract, that, two, the, two things, let yes. me ask two questions. Is the, is Parliament, mm -hmm. and here includes the Oversight Committee, yeah. is Parliament sees with a copy of that contract? No. Two, is, is a copy of that contract on the PPA website? No, I checked, it's not, it's okay. not there. And, uh, and it didn't come to us too for okay. for for approval okay. because it's it's they didn't need it's to. done is they don't yeah, need they didn't to because need to it's, it's not an international yes, yes. financial agreement yeah. yeah so you have a contract already so this business they are talking as if 
when they when you apply for passport, then they go and print at the current market maybe, rate. Maybe, maybe. That is not because what we happens. We have not interrogated the contract. We also don't know whether they had some terms in the contract that they make for forex losses and adjustments and all that. We don't know. Yes, we don't know. So, yes. so that is why we are saying that all of these matters, you come and lay them. Then you see, you get a bargain. Let me ask you a Look, question. There have been instances where you even get bipartisan support. You even have More. NDC MPs who will even be making the case for you. So let me ask this but question. You keep asking let me ask this question. You something, make... something has come up, and I want yeah. to ask a question mm-hmm. related to that as we wind up on this. Yeah. Now, where the standing orders mm-hmm. does not provide, is not explicit on an issue, what happens? Is the speaker empowered to yes, give under, directives? Yes, under the standing orders. Okay. Is, this the, is the speaker who must... This is why I'm asking the yeah. question. If I read what Honorable <clears throat> Kofi Adam said yeah. and the discussion here... Yeah. Yeah, and I'm told that the fees and charges you have like a, yes, a huge a, across many sectors. Yes, that that yeah. is brought. Yeah. Now, shouldn't the standard practice then be that all agencies, the request yeah. and justification must go before the relevant committee, and then the relevant committee must present a report to the, um, the subsidiary, subsidiary legislation. legislation. The subsidiary legislation, if it so wishes, can then invite those agencies or institutions to come before it yeah. before this approval moving is made. forward this should be this should be this should be considered and actually uh, if you like legislated because as Kofi Adams indicated that really has been the convention and normally people are subsidiary legislation will always assume that that has been done you know if they have i think the only um, if you like a slip in this whole matter this whole development if our colleagues there had called us those of us who were foreign affairs committee. Maybe they would have assumed you know, that. I think they just yes. assumed that once it's come there, the foreign affairs committee has cleared it. Because mm. as Kofi Adam said, normally that's what you will expect. Mm. You know, so let's be so clear. The, let's be clear. Mm. This matter was not handled properly. Mm. They've exhibited but bad by faith who? by the ministry and by government. This matter, I'm sure it went to cabinet, the president, how they went about it. You see, as we speak now, all of these claims of subsidy. How is that subsidy paid? Because if you go to the entire budget, all these years... But you have told us how it's paid. You've told us that there's subsidization. Good. So, 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 that, so there ought to be so, further interrogation. So, so, so you cannot then say that, oh, we are spending tax bill. If you listen to the Honorable who appeared could be at his press conference, he said, why are 80% paying taxes to subsidize some rich 20% who go for passports? Mm. Well, let's see. Okay. Well, All right. You know, now, so, 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 you see, simple matters show good faith. Um, you go to your oversight committee. They say, come back. Come back. You know, lay down all the facts. Get a buy-in. Then we, if we can even discuss how we do the increment, graduated. You know, then you, then you see. Or, or, that, that, that or is maybe what, the facts presented yeah, could, yes, even, could even, yes, could even, for you know, could even let say you that, support yes, the, yes, 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 yes. Okay. And the All facts right. could even say that. Look, we may even have to go beyond this and when when chief year. embedded okay. passports come right. in and all of that. Okay. Then, then there's no secrecy. Right. There's transparency. It doesn't show <laughs> that you have anything to add. Okay. Finally, finally, let me <laughs> demolish this Nana Komiya theory that <laughs> Goro boys. <laughs> Uh, are going to vanish because of these increments. It won't happen. What drives the Goro market mm, is the lack of efficiency. In all of this discussion, they are only incre- interested in taking more money. They haven't told us what measures they are going to put in place to remove the bottlenecks. So he says call them and establish a chapter with them that Go- you can hold the, them responsible the, as oversight. Goro boyism mm. will continue to thrive. If there is a backlog, as we speak, there are about 7,000 passports in the backlog. The last time we summoned the director of passports who appeared before us. As long as that backlog remains. And what was the reason he gave for the backlog? They said their printer broke down. Now the World Bank, they made an appeal to the World Bank. World Bank donated a giant printer to them, but they are waiting for a software. The, the passport office's printer? Yes. Not the... No, passport office. Okay. Passport office. Okay. Yeah. And um, the World Bank has donated the printer to them, but they are waiting for some software. So it, it comes with some unique software. If you don't address these issues, your Guru boys will still be there. All right. So, so it has nothing really... Maybe the 100 cities on top of the 400 will help that. 
you have given them what they are asking for. Mm. So now they are no more under recovery. We haven't given them anything. I'm not I'm part of that. I'm <laughs> so not part Parliament of has. Part of Parliament has. I'm not part you of are, that. You have no reserve don't, as MP. So. Don't add me to it. <laughs> was there a dissenting vote in Parliament? No. There was no, there was no vote, actually. When an airline is late, do we that, vote on airlines? That's when one day is matured. Do we vote on airlines? You no, no. Experience did, did, you, did you talk against it? Do we talk on because airlines? listen, do we talk on airlines? Listen, listen, no, let's stop misinforming no, the two thirds. Two airlines is just late, it ah. matures after 21 days. That's all, there's no debate, there's oh, no it's, vote. It's automatic, yes, matur- automatic, maturity. yes, true, true. Ah, that's why that, parliament, that's why parliament has introduced the pre the pre yes, to deal with some of yes. these. Yes. Where does the two third vote come in? That's when you want to stop yes. the so maturity, saying, yes. So, did you canvas for the stoppage? Uh, do, do I have two thirds? No, no, but did you canvas for it? How do you uh, get it if you don't canvas for it? <laughs> How do you get it? Uh, NDC MPs to text. <laughs> please, please, please. But the, the, the committee that approved the subsidy... You keep changing yeah. first. Did you say anything? Then, then, did you vote? Then, then now, is it, is now it's canvas. Can, can After canvas, where are we can going I, can to? Can Nana speak small? No, I mean, because please, yeah. Nana is all over the place. You, I mean, can, you can negate by two texts. Okay. How do you get a two texts? By advocating for it. Uh. Did you advocate for it? Because what the record will show was that it passed parliament. There was no, this, no voice this, against this. And in fact, the committee, where the NDC has a majority, there was no dissenting voice. Mm. The right. NDC has a majority and the chairmanship of that committee. Okay. Are you saying that those members of the committee, they are not patriotic like you? Maybe that didn't come to the attention. These now, details, yeah. come to the attention. So this brings up the guru, which me is the main issue. Mm. Now that you've given them the money, the money mm. to recover their cost and make a margin, there should be no excuse mm. for inefficiency. Mm. So, if you pay your five hundred, you're supposed to get your passport in one week. You have to get your passport in because now you have the money. Right. If they fail, you should hold them accountable. Mm. That is where your oversight. Will be useful mm. now this somebody tries to give the impression that if the matter had been dealt with by foreign affairs committee mm. there'll be no public outcry how is that how is that and you have more credit the, the you public, have legitimacy so when it goes to you subsidiary the then, so when it goes to subsidiary then there's no credibility there's no, no legitimacy. What did they send to what subsidiary? What kind of no strange fact, things? No, no, so, so there's no subsidi- justification. So the, subsi- the subsidiary committee, which is chaired by a member of your party, cannot do their work to foster credibility. And to fo- that. That's what you're saying. You're, you're saying that engaging if propaganda. you are... No, your own work. Maybe, your maybe, maybe, you didn't. You, maybe, maybe you, 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 you didn't. You didn't maybe, listen to what Kofi had done. They right. assume that this has been done at the parent oversight committee. But if it had been done, didn't they also ask for justification? And if it had been done, did you give them a report that had been done? Why would they assume so? And if the procedure is that you go through the uh, you go through your oversight committee. Who, and, and if they hadn't done that or completed that process, who referred the matter to the subsidiary committee? Mm. So, this business right. that you are coming to okay. say so is difficult to understand. So, oh, 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 mm-hmm. I'm, yes. I'm happy, they say the, the company is book press. Yes. I'm happy that the Ghanaian company, <laughs> many they've times, been doing it for years. Many yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, for many years. A lot for of years. <laughs> things, yeah. It printed abroad and all of that. I'm happy that it's a Ghanaian company. Mm. And Bog Press, of course, is a reputable company. Mm. And I'm happy that they are even printing for Liberia and mm. so on. This is the way we should be going. Mm. Getting but the Ghanaian I, but I'll be happier with a competitive then. arrangement. Mm. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so that we drive down prices. Go, go and ask for the contract and then check All right. Out okay. So we'll take a break. When we return, Digitalization.
and shine, rise and shine. So now that day to stay on point. Toast is fried, it's still on point. Watch is fried, it's all day long. Still on point, yes, it's still on point. It's still on point. Watch is fried, it's still on point. Mmm, it's creamy. For your toast, it's still on point. It's yummy, delicious. It's still on point. Spread delicious, creamy, and always on point. This advert is FDA approved. This is a call to you. The dreamers. The ones that see no boundaries. Dreamers take a chance. The explorers that chart their own path. Along the vibes connect the energy. The ones that dare to challenge the status quo. Get connected, feel the when others try to think outside the box, you wonder what box. Catch the wave, enjoy the ride. To the architects of their journeys. Every connection is an opportunity to explore every experience. This is your call to adventure. Your journey begins here. Be bold, be daring. Connecting passions, connecting dreams, connecting ambitions. Telesel, connecting energies. Welcome to a help home. In today's modern world, stairs are a challenge, especially for our elderly and those with health concerns. Navigating them can be difficult and even dangerous, but there's a safer way to move vertically. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, your answer to a more accessible and secure vertical transportation. Our elevators and escalators, including top-of-the-line pneumatic vacuum elevators, Fuji elevators and escalators, offer a safer and more convenient alternative, eliminating the risks of stairs and enhancing accessibility for homes, businesses and hospitals. Choose safety and convenience with lifts and elevators limited company. Elevate your spaces today. For more information, visit our website at www.elevatorsgh.org or call now on 0200-535-515. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, the elevator people. Yeah, Oh, I should be. Eh, me. Ma, the Jamal washing powder for front and sashes I can see it in Numaba. Eh, ye in Kikayan Kasa. Anima. Ma, Jamal washing powder, bottle 30. Can you mouth the bed? Hey, Jamal. New Jamal washing powder. A man, you may need to. The Musi Sham. Oh, who can for our or my one tidy in it? FD, I did a dream crowd to Yatum. We are back, bringing you the latest lineup from Betway. Betway starts strong with your front two, with free play Friday and swipe bet. I'm a food now. In the middle, you've got all the control, with cash out and build a bet. Plus, with win boost, you can boost your sports bet. At the back, they have smart picks and the partial daily jackpot. You always get way more with Betway. And you man is sick. has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly. No under 18. Terms and conditions apply. Betway. Get way more. Customer, customer. Ah, Tangana city. Tangana city. Tangana 
one of our daily lucky winners. Dial star 946 hash to play now. Or you can also play online at www.gameparkgames.com. Game Park is regulated by the National Lottery Authority. It's good to stay strong together. It's good to share nutritious meals cooked with Phytol, a vitamin A fortified oil. Phytol, you deserve a life of goodness. This advert is FDA approved. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV. Still with me on the show, I have Anana Akumia and Samuel Kujatua Black. But what does wealth mean to you? Do you want to live like a tycoon? Remember, as God and Mullah got the power. Ghana's newest lottery game draws live on Adum TV at 9 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. daily. Now pick up your phones, tablets, and computers and download the Game Park Games app on Play Store. You can also play on the website at www.gamepackgames.com or by dialing star 946 hash. On all networks, just choose four numbers from zero to nine. It's easy to play and easy to win. Charlie, make we play this game and make some mola. Nobody beats out in Ghana. Game park games, more mola, more power. This game is regulated by the National Lottery Authority. It's not for persons under 18. Play responsibly. Ayesoko, that costs on both be big, but better is cash out be bigger. Betway is giving you more control over every thrilling bet you place. Enjoy the biggest and most reliable cash out in Ghana. On Betway without any hassle. Sign up today at betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions apply. Not for persons under 18, and this is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Betway get way more. And Blue Jeans Energy Drink has been on the Ghanaian market for about 20 years. We already know what it does for the body. It contains vitamins and nutrients like vitamin B2, B3, B6, B12, as well as taurine and guarana, which are known to boost your strength and energy as well as promote high performance and endurance. Blue Jeans Energy Drink has been tested and tried. It's indeed the best. Blue Jeans Energy Drink is for bold and active men and women. So go on, grab a cold can and power your day. It's in shops nationwide. For bulk purchases, contact Budget Cash and Carry Limited on 0208-128190-055-001-0000. Now, Sammy, there are two issues you've raised. I think we can deal with one in about six minutes. Okay. Okay. That has to do with the immediate past Commissioner General. So you have published two letters, and um, um, and it put those two letters on. And we we actually saw publications on the 27th of March, indicating that the Commissioner General has been uh, relieved of his position, yeah. and that um, a lady, I think, uh, Mrs. Julie Julie, the last name I'm not getting right. Um, has been appointed as the acting commissioner general. That was on the 27th of March. Now, there was something that happened prior to this. Let's watch this uh, video from the Public Accounts Committee. Okay. Yes. Sir, at what, which year did you attain the age of 60? CJ, I'm waiting for a response. What year did you attain the age of 60? Isn't this personal, Chairman? What? I, I think it's, it's too personal. No, no. no. The, uh, uh, chairman, chairman, if, if, if people think on, that this is personal, on, let me just remind this House and the Finance Minister, the Deputy Finance Minister, that her boss, her boss, the Finance Minister, 
came before the House of Parliament and informed us on behalf of His Excellency the President, President Nanado Danko Kufuado, that he was no longer going to be giving contractual extensions to people above the age of 60, especially when their expertise was not scarce. Your boss, the finance minister, Ken Oforiata, told the House that on behalf of His Excellency the President, Nanado Danko Kufuado. And so when I ask a question that at what, which year did the Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority attain 60, it is not a personal question, he's a public servant. Thank you. But, but this man, is, is my colleague assuming? Is he assuming that? I, have, I, haven't, I haven't called you. I haven't called you. Oh. I haven't called you. OPK, OPK, I haven't called you. Leave that one to me to, 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 to no, direct. OMC is a, it's not a personal question. Please. Honorable members, honorable members, we have our laws in this country that govern us. If the Commissioner General attained the age of 60, he can be given a contract. If the member is asking a question about his age, he should just respond and say, I'm 60, but I'm on contract. Finish. What about the final minister say? We'll take the final minister's own. So why are we arguing about this? We should not, we should not argue about this. You can say that, oh, I'm on contract. That's all. Yeah. So, so uh, Mr. Commissioner General, Mr. Commissioner General, can you can you respond to the to the to the member's question? Mr. Chairman. Honorable members, why? Are you the one asking the question? Sam George is the one who asked the question. Can we hear yes, the Mr. actual question from Sam George? Thank you very much, Chairman. The question again I ask very simple. Which year did the Commissioner General of the GRA attain 60? Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Before he answers, I just want to find out is this a public interest question? No, it's Respectfully. Yes, it's asking us. Honorable, honorable Minister. So then, uh, Mr. Chairman, if he has a question, he should go straight to the question. Honorable, asking for honorable Minister. Age. Honorable Minister. The, the officer to whom the question is directed is a public officer. So it's a public interest question. Uh, chairman, no. It's, too personal. No, it's a personal no, question, no. Mr. Chairman. No, 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 no. It's not personal. It's not, it's, it's not personal. It's not personal. It is not personal. M Mr. Chairman, it's just, it's just like asking Mr. Mr. Commissioner General, where were can you born? Can they respond to the question? It's just like asking Mr. Commissioner General, where were you born? For me... I have explained why I'm allowing him to respond to the question. If you are not satisfied with this, do you want to be shouting at this committee? Will that solve the problem? It won't. I'm saying that he's a public officer. We have the law that governs this country. Fortunately, if you attain the age of 60, you have the opportunity to be given a contract. If he's on contract, he will tell us, and that's solve it. What is your problem? If he's not up to 60, he will say it. What is your problem? Mr. Commissioner General, can I respond to the question? All right, so it's been, it's been 15 minutes and the question is still not being answered. Uh, however, uh, months later, it appears that we have an answer to the question. And yes. Sami, you are livid about it. Yes. Why? yes. Um, so on Wednesday, I intercepted these documents from the presidency. Two letters dated the 26th of March. Same day. Same day, 26th March 2024, uh, but with different reference numbers. Mm. Signed by Nana Bidia to Asante, secretary to the president. He signed both letters. Addressed to but the... Let's see the letters. Dear Commissioner General. I'm reading the first one 
mm. extending Reverend Dr. Misha Dai Uswama, the Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authorities <laughs> mandate for two years. <clears throat> he says, extension of service as Commissioner General of Ghana Revenue Authority. I am pleased to inform you that the President has granted you a two-year extension of service as Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority from the 11th of October 2021 to 10th October 2023. I take this opportunity to congratulate you on your further extension. Please accept the president's best wishes. So hold on, so hold on, so hold on. The president has. Yes. What? Yes. The president has. Yes. The paragraph has. Two. Has the president has granted you has granted a two year you. extension. And then. On, and the date is 26 March 2024. No, and then the next paragraph says. As Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority from 11th October 2021 yes. to 10th October 2023. So, okay. retroactive. So, 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 the President on 26th of March, after the fact, yeah. 26th of March, decided yeah. to grant yes. the man extension, extension from 2021 to 2023. to 2023. Yeah, when we are in March 2020. And he decided to take that decision on the 26th of, 26 March, 2024. of March 2024. Okay. And that is not all. And you know, you know why they will have to send two letters mm. under the Constitution. If the president must grant these extensions, he can only do two years. Two years at a go. So two years at a time, two, two years, years and not more year. than two years. Mm. Two years, two years, then one, one year. year. Okay. So you can have a maximum of five, five years. years. So, so this letter, they, they delayed? Yes, it's, it's almost three years after the fact. So 26 March 2024, same day, mm -hmm. the president's secretary signs another letter. Mm -hmm. Further extension, this one is... Further extension of service mm. as Commissioner General. The first one is extension. This one is further extension of service. As ah, so Commissioner the same General. day, the man got two extensions. Two extensions, yes. Of two and a half years. Y yes. On the same day, yes. after he has served the two and a half years. Yes, after. Okay. What a country, what a government, okay. what a president. Ah, so we could so like... it says further extension. Yeah. I am pleased to inform you that the president has granted you a further extension of service as Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority from 11th October 2023 to 31st March 2024. I take this opportunity to congratulate you on your further extension. Okay. Please accept the President's best wishes. Sign Nana Bidio to Assant, okay. Secretary to the President. But it was on the 27th that we were informed yes. that he's been relieved yes. of his appointment. Yes. And same day, 27th, we were informed of the appointment of the yes, lady. Yes, of the lady. Okay. Yes. And you see, a civil society group mm -hmm. announced last week their leader is uh, Atik Mohammed. Okay. That they are going to court okay. to test the law. Okay. That the 27 months that Reverend Amish Adai has been in office, mm. should he be entitled to all the salaries, all the mm. uh, privileges that he has mm. enjoyed? Mm. Shouldn't he be refunding it? And what are the legal implications of all the contracts that he signed on our behalf? Mm. Particularly the SML $100 million contract. So they announced, they put out a statement that they are going to court. So this is clearly an effort by the president to clean Reverend Amisha Daya. So not even this, what happened at the Public Accounts Committee. Yes, could stop them. Could make them even write a letter. Yes. I mean, and they waited till 26 March 2024, only last week. And then the following day, they announced that the man has been signed. The man, yes, the man is, is, is going. To yes. So this is to cover his tracks. And you see, what is worrying is that the country is awaiting the KPM, KPMG report mm. on SML. Mm. I'm sure one of the matters, critical issues, mm. that KPMG will have looked at is whether the man even had capacity. In fact, at the time contract. the president appointed, uh, at the time KPMG yeah. was appointed by the president, yeah. To go into these things, yeah. the president had not legitimized the man's exactly. Job. He has yes, he, he has not. He has, he has it. So why are you doing this now? Why? So you want to just make nonsense of everything? Um, just clean the man up, cover his tracks. What, what kind of governance is no? This? But why would any government keep somebody at a job yeah. for two and a half years yes. without doing what the law says? He yes. Do? Yeah. Why did he stay on? What business did Reverend Amisha Dai have staying in that office? All these years. I'm trying to, you see, I'm trying to, I'm trying and, to reconcile and, this and with, with the efforts that was made in hounding out the Molevo. Yes. At least yes. the Supreme Court has told us. Yes. Yeah. That despite all the legal jargons and all the grammar in those letters that yeah. were written, yeah. it was not grounded yeah. in law. Yeah. Fantastic. Even telling him to take his accumulated leave and all of yeah. that. 
They couldn't wait to get rid of him. I remember a line in that letter that suggested that he, Domelevo, is not a lawyer. Yeah. So he, could, he cannot be lecturing or speaking yeah. about the law. Yeah. I mean, I mean, look at this. Anyway. Mm. Right. Well, the, clearly, it doesn't look tidy mm -hmm. for appointment letters to be written two years after the appointment. It doesn't look tidy. Um, and so we hope that things will be better. But um, the way Samuel Kujeto is going on politicizing the issue, what the president... Always you want to share blame. Me, what blame do I have in this? No, no. Am I the one asking your no, president no. to... Yeah, but, up, but you uh, said... Clean people up. You said this what the president... Horrible man. What the government... Yeah. I'm saying that. Are you proud of your government? These things you people are doing, are you proud but of? But if I don't finish speaking, how will you know what I'm proud of? <laughs> now, the... Uh, you want to blame the, me the for reason, everything? I'm not, no, you are blaming. I'm saying that mm. it's, it's not time. Mm. Nobody would be happy about appointment letters being written two years after the appointment. But the way you are going about it, like it's some what the president, what the government, indicting the whole government is not fair. The reason why I say it's not fair is that I'll read to you something that um, Felix Kwachio for You don't get He that. said, letters with retroactive effect. Mm -hmm. He was responding to somebody called Collins. I don't know who that is. Mm -hmm. Master Collins. You of all persons cannot join the bandwagon of ignorance. Letters with retroactive effect are very, very normal in government and public admin. Mm -hmm. The letter appointing me as an aide to former President Mahama from January 2017 to January 2021 was written to me two clear years after I had started work. Mm -hmm. When I was reappointed after the expiration of the first four years, mm -hmm. the letter confirming my reappointment mm -hmm. was written in September last year mm -hmm. and states that the appointment took effect from January mm -hmm. 2021 mm -hmm. and ends in January 2025. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, if you try and portray one government as what it is, it's not fair. Are you saying that this is an, this is an appointment letter uh, by no, no, this a, a person in government. No, what Felix wrote, if this is true, this, this this, is, yeah, he's talking about mm -hmm. aid to the former, former president. president. Let, let so, read, was, so, so it means it was written now under this government. Let, let me, yes, yes, let, yeah, me, let, me, this let, me, let me write yeah. here. Let me read. Letters of retroactive effect are very, very normal. Mm -hmm. But I hope this is this yeah. is authentic. No, but it, even if, if no, it, it, let, let's let's it yes. says that letters with retroactive uh, like is because to some from, from, like to hear from in, Felix on this are very very normal in government and public administration, mm. which I don't agree. I mean, why would why would you write letters with retroactive? So if you don't if you don't agree, why are you using? No, it's it? because Samuel Kujato is going on about what the government. What the so let me ask you a question, Nana, uh -huh. on this one. Yeah. Now, Felix, the, is he appointment, no, the appointment of people after they've attained the age of 80, 80? 60, sorry, yeah, after yeah. they've attained the age of 60, yeah. is completely different. Completely different. Yeah. Because in that one, there is a constitutional provision, provision yeah. that if the person attains that age, you can do A, B, C, D. You should do A, B, C, D. Yeah. This is how you should do it. This is how you should do it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. 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 It is different yeah. from a normal public service thing where we post teachers and health workers and mm -hmm. it takes time yeah. to get the, uh, this thing formalized and all those things. What are we talking about? On this we are talking about the president exercising a constitutional with, responsibility. With, with your yeah. active effect. Long after the... Listen, long after we are the, talking about appointment letter. Yeah. Mm. In fact, the reason why you when, got these letters here yeah. is because those letters took retroactive effect. Yes. yes. That's why you got yes. them. Yes. Yes. And that they matters. should have been written yeah. yes. and three are, years ago. Yes. And there are matters that this man so, has engaged in during uh, that period, which are, are the subject uh, of investigation. Yes. Yes. No problem. But mm. we are talking about his appointment letters mm. written 
two years and contracts he has signed the SML. So we are talking about letters at the time he didn't have appoint, capacity appoint, to sign those contracts. We are mm. talking about letters mm. appoint, making appointments mm. with retroactive effect, mm -hmm. sometimes two years and so on. And we're saying that it can be tidier. I mean, right. Really. But your attempt to ask us to believe that mm. this shows the, the, the presidency is totally not up to it and the, yeah, but the, what government, you the government is actually worsens your case because well, why, why it's the same Akufuado government that give, is giving him no, belated, belated oh, you mean, uh, you mean yes. Felix was appointed by the government? Yeah, because he's uh, under the conditions of service yes, of former president. No, no, it's an aid no. to the former president. We, we can't appoint. No, he's, he's appointed we, by the former we, president. We, we can't appoint Felix to be aid to... General no, but Trump. you... you but your, it's your, a your eagerness to do propaganda no. makes you totally. Now we are the one appointing Felix to it is not, to John Mahama. I mean, what is this? What is this? It is no, so, so no, public no, no, what's, service what's ratification. The, what's the? What's the? I don't get the relevance. What's the, what's the, relevance? the relevance is that yes, it's Felix a retiree. Obviously, yes. obviously, this is a recurrent matter. Then we should make sure it doesn't continue. Mm. But this business of it, 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 what the government, what the president, I'm saying, what's all this for? And it's because also it's something that. But, but, but don't, so, don't, so, so don't, the government don't. announced a policy mm -hmm. to parliament. Mm -hmm. That government has decided Which policy? that a policy of not engaging yeah, people, people on, uh, uh, who, uh, who have met their, their retirement age. 60. It was oh, really? announced, yes, it was announced in parliament yeah. by that, the finance minister. It was in the 2022 budget. Yes. And sure? subsequently, the Minister of State, now, now Minister of State designate, yes. um, uh, Mrs. Abna Osei, yeah. uh, yes. signed a letter signed to all. a letter yeah. informing everybody that this is the directive and that they are no longer going to offer contracts. Now, against these two, what was contained in the document to Parliament, and it was part of measures that government said it was going to use to yeah. You know, should call the, the, yeah. yes. the Honorable Abna Osea's letter is dated 5th August 2022. Mm. I have a copy here. It says uh, financial clearance, contract appointment. Please refer to the 2022 budget statement and economic policy, which has been submitted and approved by Parliament for the 2022 fiscal year. The Ministry of Finance writes to inform heads of ministries, departments, and agencies and MMDAs of some expenditure policy measures mm -hmm. as outlined in the 2022 budget statement. Paragraph 324 of the 2022 budget statement and economic policy states, quote, government has with immediate effect suspended the granting of approval for post-retirement contract appointments, except in cases where the skills of the retiring officer are in short supply and unavoidably needed, unquote. In view of this, we are unable to grant financial clearance for post-retirement contract appointments at this stage. Please treat as urgent. Signed, Honorable Abna Osaya Sir, Deputy Minister so for the Minister, the all Chief Directors. Mm. Yeah, you are and it is this same period. What was the point? Yeah, so I'm saying that this is clearly what the President communicated to Parliament, yeah. so to the people of Ghana, yeah. that this is the decision that has been yeah. taken. Yeah. Approved the by action Parliament. of the President is contrary to <coughs> what he told us. Yes. Okay. If um, you claim that the appointment of uh, Reverend Mr. Dai mm -hmm. goes contrary to what we've read from the ministry. There's no mind claim. You don't believe it. You don't no, believe one that second. I'm, I'm saying, yes. if that's your claim, mm. it may be a valid claim mm. about the propriety mm. of it. Mm. That's not to do with the retroactive aspect. It's a different matter. That whether retroactive or not, the appointment goes against policy. Mm -hmm. But if we read the letter that Samuel Kujeto has brought, mm -hmm. it would look like the appointment of this particular gentleman predates mm -hmm. Abena uh, says letter. Because mm -hmm. this appointment so, is from so, 20, 2021. So, 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 and, and the letter is 2020. So, so, so. There are two letters. The two letters. Yeah. There so the letters. second one. Yeah. The further the extension. One. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can make that point that the second letter, mm -hmm. the second appointment, because that one came after 2022. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but on the matter and, of the and then and then what are the implications for 
the agreement he signed, which is a subject of controversy. Oh, well, by, by this letter, which obviously, agreement? government is yes, committed. It's, it's, which, it's which, agree, to which agreement? The but they're saying that SML, the, the decisions dollar. that were taken. Yeah. Yeah. So at, 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 the, the, at the heart of this is a president see, once again played, trying, that's to, why I went back trying to, to claim play his, what his happened at the up. public appointments committee. Yeah. yeah. But it's obviously. The man himself, he didn't have an appointment letter at the time. Yes. No. Yeah, obviously. That's, that's why, why, that's why he couldn't. If he was given these letters, <laughs> yeah. the day he was told that <laughs> yes. he's no longer going no, to no, continue. No, exactly. Clearly on time. Clearly yeah. on time. And they want to, you know, claim him. But um, you know, it happened during your time. I mean, oh, Felix says that it's, it's normal. Just, it's just I mean, <laughs> a pension to cover up and, you know, I mean, Ah. But you people, this is the whole thing. You have, you have to the, the whole, Which one? The whole, the whole, the whole oh, now, 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 things, yes, yeah, now things are, are so it's been nullified. Things are normalizing. We, we, are, we are not discussing Nungwa. We, we are discussing getting, Jubilee uh, House. We are getting house. some, some, some you are not clarity and all those. We are things. discussing Jubilee House. Is okay. Jubilee House in Nungwa? What, 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 what clarity? What clarity? Is Jubilee uh, House in Nungwa? Oh, the traditional authorities are bringing clarity. I've said that there's a conflict between. The law, Doc, I'm so surprised customary that. law, and then um, um, statute or, mm -hmm. or yes. I'm surprised and that so you are, that is what we need to you do. You are falling for his trap. But custom, you don't because, see, you don't see he, what he's because doing because he calls me Gamanche. So you don't see what he's I, doing. I know that he was. Is the Jubilee House located? Come on, we finish. The man that? is closing the program. And I sleep. Who told you that we finish? We are going to oh, discuss digitalization. Who told you that we finish? <laughs> We have 10 minutes. 10 minutes, good. Uh, I'll make good use of it. I'm not okay. going to follow Nana Komiya to Nungwa. Okay. So, I was shocked uh -huh. when the National Health Insurance Authority appeared before us with their 2024. When is it us? Who are you? Parliament. Okay. Parliament. So now we have to be careful. Uh, yes. <laughs> the, not the Foreign Affairs <laughs> Committee. This is the, the larger parliament. Right. Yeah. Mm. And, not the, and not, the, yeah, not the subsidiary <laughs> legislation. Yes. So, for precision. How did, they, how did they come before you? They were referred to you. Yes, this committee of the whole. Oh. Yeah, committee yeah, of the whole. So yeah. you know that we Thanks for the clarification. We approved the formulas for get for yeah, yeah. the get fund mm -hmm. for NHIA mm -hmm. for the DACF. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the National Health Insurance yeah. Authority. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, before the entire and parliament. The sheer preponderance mm -hmm. of digitalization expenditures mm -hmm. over one point one billion mm -hmm. struck us. So, one of the key recommendations of the session that day was to have a committee, a bipartisan committee, to look into this digitalization matter. Who's will you, will you? Who's the chairman of that committee? Uh, so, this is a committee of the whole chaired by the Honorable George who's the first deputy speaker. No, no, you said it's going to be a bipartisan committee too. Yes, the membership has not yet been constituted. Yeah. So, the NHIA told us that they are going to spend 405.74 million Ghana cities on new biometric ID cards and authentication systems mm -hmm. for children 6 to 14 years. 405 million. Then they will spend another 343.92 million on a management information system. Another digitalization contract for claims processing centers and e-claims. That is 76 million. Then it continues, page 20. An archival system and document management. All IT experts are shocked that when you say you are going to do a management information system at 343 million, you don't have to be doing a separate, another digitalization contract for archival system and document management. It's supposed to be a subset of a management information system. That is another 38.58 million. Then they say that claims data that will be captured, another 112 million. Data transfer from NIA, data transfer alone from NIA, 10 million. Then e pharmacy, which you heard the vice president talk about at the Kweu work, the infamous Kweu work, e pharmacy. That contract will cost us 11 million. You put this together, it's in excess of 1.1 billion. Now, I know this will annoy you the most, doctor, because you have been very passionate about this, and I salute you for that. 
as we are spending these billions on digitalization, mm. you know how much they said they will give the dialysis patients? Dialysis support for the needy. Two million. Can you believe it? Two million. Two million. Two million Ghana cities. And then they got newspaper front that? pages to carry yes. as if government yeah. was going to treat dialysis. Yeah. Can you believe that? What private sector people, like the first Sky group, who we must celebrate, have spent hundreds of millions. The whole NHI. And you look at the health sector in Ghana. What should be our priority at this point? This is a sector that, as we speak, the whole country, there are only four functioning MRIs. Can you believe that? Only four functioning MRIs. That's what the, the former health minister told us. You heard the doctors at Konfanochi say they have only one and a half dialysis machines. One and a half. They don't have a mammography machine for women in the Ashanti region who show up with breast cancer. They don't have one. As we speak, 37 doesn't have a, just a functioning put, just MRI to, machine. Just to put it in context, mm-hmm. if a dialysis patient with uh, three treatments yeah. a week yeah. uh, spends 1,000 CDs a week mm-hmm. on treatment, yeah. if the cost is 1,000, yeah. and the month is therefore 4,000, 2 million CDs mm-hmm. can cater for 500 patients for one month. 2 million CDs. Okay, At 4,000 CDs per patient yeah. per month. Only five patients? No, 500. 500. Mm-hmm. Only 500. Have you finished? No, no, no. I'm just warming up. So you look at the health sector. Only last week, Madame Perpetual Fouri, the head of the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association, told us that nurses who helped us fight COVID are still waiting for their promised compensation. If they are they are, they are told us that over 6,000 nurses are leaving because of their working conditions. And they say that it is even not really about salaries, but the conditions. They don't even have equipment to work with. We all saw the video from Tema General Hospital. Many hospitals that have been left incomplete. What should be our priority in the health sector? Is it this dubious digitalization contrast that should be our priority? So, Doc, I decided to take this matter more seriously, beyond mm-hmm. what has been presented to us, and to probe further. To my utter shock, I discovered that most of these contracts that the NHI is going to award and has awarded some already, over 1.1 billion, are already being done. I hold in my hands here the brochure that launched government's e-health project with biosurveillance, early warning system, launched on the 21st of November 2017 by a company known as Lightwave E-Healthcare Solutions. Mm. Those who were at the launch are here, the health minister, the chief of staff, the Honorable Akosia Fruma Osea Pare, the director general of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Anthony Nsia Asari. This is a $100 million contract. And Doc, when you go through the contract, the project overview, it talks about digitalizing our medical records, networking all the hospitals, all hospitals, creating a data center for 24-hour recovery units. Meanwhile, 2016, we, a data center was commissioned, so we didn't even need to sign this $100 million contract in 2017 to provide a data center, provide electronic medical records, develop a real-time biosurveillance system, develop or enable the development of a patient management system. Then it says the system will integrate the NHIS system to all hospitals in real-time validation. Meanwhile, the NHIA is going to award other contracts in 2024 when this light wave contract is doing the same thing. Develop a centralized laboratory system. And you know how much has been paid so far for this? Mm. We've paid about 539 million cities. When I did some further digging from our payment system. 
539 million health insurance and Ministry of, Ministry of Health. And it's a running contract they are still paying. Actually, the ministry is about to pay another 80 million in addition to the 539 million. And, and this is for what? For the e health e health project. What they are calling the digitalization of medical records, biosurveillance, and all of that. They said they are networking all the hospitals. And indeed, if you look at the crude letter of 2nd June 2017 by the health minister, he didn't even take notice or acknowledge that the hospitals had existing contracts with other vendors. All of that, they just terminated all of it and parachuted with light wave. $100 million contract. And we are going to spend, so this is $1.3 billion. We are going to spend another $1.1 billion on virtually the same thing. I thought I have had the worst. Mm. Then I discover that, oh, the party continues. Others are being invited. There's a new kid on the block. He's coming to Bamba with the big boys. Mm. A company known as Spectrum Fiber Limited. Owned by Mr. Razak Awudulai. Mm. Close associate of the vice president. Mm. He's actually serving on the Vice President's Manifesto Committee on Communications. Mm -hmm. Close associate. So all this digitalization that the Vice President is champion is becoming mm. clear to us mm. what it is about. Mm. This company, I have the PPA approval of 5th October 2023. Really request for approval to use single source method. Single source. The people who said they are going to end Single source and sole source. Single source method for the building of a wide area network connectivity and data center. Data center again. Mm -hmm. Duplication. Sometimes in triple, fourfold. So Lightwave is doing one and data center. Hundred million dollars. NIA says they are going to also do more. One point one billion. Mm -hmm. Then fifth October twenty twenty three. You are bringing in spectrum fiber, single source, to do the same thing. For how much? For $18.4 million. That is some 245 million Ghana cities. Imagine what 245 million can do in this our crippled health sector, where there are no beds, there are no incubators. Look at the stories on a daily basis. So what is going on here? So you put this together. 2.6 billion cities going into dubious the billion. 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 I mean, what, what, and, what is and this? Your, and your problem is the duplicitous the, nature. The of duplicitous the, nature. Of the, the, of the duplicitous the nature, yes. And the insiders I've spoken to they said they've complained. They've, they are even, they've just had it. The duplicity. And you see, I'm not the only one concerned about this. The Minister of Communications, mm. Osla, wrote this circular on the 16th of June 2017. It says, notice to all MDAs to consult the National Information Technology Agency, NITA, before procuring any ICT solution or products in Ghana. You may recall that government of Ghana in 2008, through the, an act of parliament, Act 771, established the National Information Technology Agency, NITA, to, among other things, regulate the provision of information communication technology, ensure the provision of quality information communication technology, Promote standards of efficiency and ensure high quality of service within the public sector. The ministry respectfully wishes to remind all MDs that this provision in the law is still valid and expects that public sector institutions endeavoring to procure any ICT solutions will seek the expert views of NITA to ensure that investments made from the public person on ICT solutions in near to the benefit of the nation and the citizen. It has come to the attention of the ministry that MDAs are procuring standalone ICT solutions, applications, equipment, software, platforms, and switches that are not interoperable with existing technologies and therefore making them ineffective. Some also duplicate existing systems or do not provide value for money or use expensive proprietary software. In order to reduce duplication and waste of resources and to instill sanity, in the procurement of ICT solutions and products within the public sector, NDAs are directed to consult NITA 
to seek their input on the standards and interoperability of the solutions. We seek your cooperation and request that this matter is circulated to all departments and agencies under your purview. Signed, the Honorable Esla Ousu Ekufu, MP Minister. Do you know that all these digitalization contracts, my church has made up. This circular has been treated with contempt. Nita knows nothing about this. They are not checking with Nita. It's a free for all. No elder in the room. And the duplication continues. Mm. Okay. The, I mean, so what's the next step beyond the so ex I have, expose? Yes. yes. What also emerged mm. is that apparently our medical records, we are in trouble. Mm -hmm. my, my investigations reveal that the Ghana Health Service doesn't even have access to the source codes. Mm. And who has it? Private people. Some in India. So next week I'm going to court. I've already instructed my lawyers. Because the Data Protection Act has been breached violently. Mm. So I'm going to court. Number By the two. Ministry of Health? Yes, in the Ghana Health Service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to court on this to stop the continuous breach. Mm -hmm. Number two, next week I'm going to the OSP. Because all of these contracts cannot continue. Particularly this new Baumia Boy contract for 10 years. They want to be in a position and be cooling off. Mm -hmm. 245 million. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. These duplications, I've seen a lot of breaches. Mm. Nita is not aware. Mm. The procurement abuses. Right. So the OSP will come in. Mm. We are also going to have a broader parliamentary inquiry. I've mm. discussed with the leadership of the House mm. on all of these digitalization schemes. Mm. It's the new scam in town. All right. Okay. You know, the. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, when Samuel Kriatu was going on about digital and half, I remember. The 1.2 billion cities we are going to do for uh, data connectivity, and then we eventually ended up spending 4.5 million. So there's a lot to talk about. But you see, Sami says that well, not he says he's presented as a document that came before Parliament yeah. from the National Health Insurance, and they've given details of their activities. And the expenditure, isn't it? Yes. And the funds that they are going to allocate to them. And you said there's on one billion, it came to one point one point one billion. One point one billion on digitalization. If we aggregate all the digitalization projects. The digitalization. Expenditure. Okay. Wait, wait, can you show me one? So okay, so this, this start from page eighteen. Just one, I just want to yes. see. Biometric, Biometric ID, ID card, card and notification. 405.74 uh, That million. is the amount they will spend on That's this, how year. Spend this year. Yeah. 105 million. Okay. Then management information system, they will spend 343 million. Mm. Yeah. And then they've given what they spent. Then they will give in the 20 80 million for the e health contract to pay for the light wave. Mm -hmm. The light wave contract, the 100 million dollar contract. Okay. But you mm -hmm. said when it came before the entire parliament. Yeah. We were all alarmed at, at the plenary. At, yeah. No, you are alarmed at what? At the the, yes, on the, digitalization. Because you suspect there could be duplicity and yes. you suspect there could be. Yeah, uh, that is what contract. made me pro feather into okay. the digitalization so a space committee, in the sector. An ad hoc committee is going to be set up yes. to look into the issues of um, the activity and the spending. Yes, of NHI. Of NHI. Yes, yeah. an ad hoc committee is going to be set up. Yes. So why don't we wait for the bipartisan ad hoc committee? Because that would be specific to NHI. I have gone beyond to look at the entire health. But what you are talking about is NHI. Yes, but no, there are other things. There is the light wave hundred million dollars. Then there is a new. So that one is not NHI. No. Then there is a new bar bar near boy contract. So two hundred and forty-five so million. So I think what you need to do is push so that it can include yes. all of this. Yes. Expand the scope. Yes. So, expand, so yeah. yeah. So that I mean, it's good that you want to raise issues, but. Let's wait for a committee. Like you said, I'm happy that you said the committee is going to look at the prudence and the spending and all of that. And um, this business about Baumia, you say somebody has been given a contract. This yes. Baumia's close associate. You, yes. you mentioned some yes. name. Uh, Who is that? Razak Awudulai, Razak the director Awudulai. of okay. the Spectrum Fiber Company Limited. And this company has been given some contract. Yes, single sourced to do. Yeah. A, as for, as a, for single sourced, we've all said that. Really, we should be able to 
amend the procurement law to limit the, the operation of single sources. But you don't need to amend the law but to stop it. You don't need to. Sorry? You are abusing the law. You don't need to amend the law to stop what you are doing. Now, if you don't amend the law, how are you going to stop? Because people are using the law. The law they are abusing us. the law, yes. They are abusing the yes, law. Yes, and I'm saying that to cut the abuse, you must no, go to the just, law. We just need integrity, leadership. Because... Look, the leaders should, should, well, well, should okay. do what they preach. In a opposition, you said you end it. Like, Why so, are you coming? You are doing worse. Well, okay. So let's say both governments have not done well. Mm. Because in the NDC, we keep, if we have to list the single excuses. source procurement that the procurement authority approved, we won't leave. Yeah, but things are getting worse. Oh, one second, one second. Mm. I have all the procurement done under Silas Mesa mm. at procurement. Single source. And you you have shown us that they are still continuing. So we said here, to one of the things, that we really need to tighten the law because the leverage that it gives is being abused. But my worry is, you said somebody is a close associate of Baumia because he's on the manifesto committee. Yes. There are 300 people on the various manifesto committees. Mm-hmm. About 300 people. Mm-hmm. I'm in two committees on, on transport and another committee. Mm. There are 300 of us on yeah. the manifesto committee. So, mm-hmm. so to describe somebody as a close associate because it's on the communications committee, I don't understand it. And the membership of the membership of the manifesto committees mm. are not selected by Baumia. The chairman of the manifesto committee mm. is Chairman Sambonsu. The the of the whole, and then there are subcommittee chairmen. Mm who then populate their committees. Mm. That's why you have the case where people have here, they see their names and they haven't been consulted. Mm. Because chairmen have gone ahead to populate their committees. Mm. I know what so, I'm talking about when I say it's a close associate. Yeah, but what, it's but, not just about the... But committee. what you, you have told us yes. is that it's a close associate yes. because it's on the communications committee. Yes. I'm saying, yes. but it's somebody... So, is, so that's, what, that's what I'm interrogating. The former appointee of President Akufrodo. That's what I'm he, was a, he was the, but the MD of go, about, of go Energy in his, the, the for those first time. Don't talk as if you don't know. You don't know the the the, the chat and, and can his I, proximity. I, I never heard of. You don't know the former the director of Go Energy and the one who does special duties. Look, for, you, for you, Bamiya, you don't know. I him. don't know all the people around anybody. Wow. There are so many people. Are you moving? Okay. I've seen him, but you don't even know the uh, name. Vice but I'm saying the Baumia mm-hmm. campaign <laughs> now doesn't know. He now, no, he now needs to do an identification. <laughs> <laughs> but you, yeah, you we, mean, we have to organize. Will you give no, me your compound? No, no, no. Give me the no, Metro no, TV no. well, the, I would, I would, I would, no, he will, will use digitalization. I would, <laughs> <laughs> no, I would single source and you to, to, to do it for you. <laughs> because the expertise yes. is there. But I'm saying that it is not fair. To Baumia or the gentleman mm. to say that he's gotten this contract because he's a close associate. Then your basis of the close association is that he's a member of a community. But you think you can come by this 245 million sole source? But you contract. see, but Nana, are you, I like Nana, are you saying that Nana, Nana, are not connected? Nana, are you saying but there's that a committee? Nana, Nana, make this okay. Okay. There's a committee that has been set up mm-hmm. by parties. You think anybody walking around so, in Ghana so, will be invited? Hey. Come for you know you know what single sources is they just call you. So hey, because that is a close association. Yeah, come pick. So Two forty five million. Go but your basis for years. the close association. It is on a committee. So so Nana. Yes, sir. <laughs> Are you from what you said and we've had this conversation a hundred times. Which one? The issue about um, single source. Both yeah, both parties did the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying that. So I always ask you this question. So the Ghanaian out there mm. who listen to you in 2016, yeah, who you pointed out all these whole contracts, who mm. you did the press conferences, the list, yeah, and issue statements, mm. and said that this was tantamount to corruption, yes, and that when you come to office, it will be a thing of the past, yes. You are you are in office, you are still in office, yes, and it's gone from bad to worse if you look yeah. at the volumes. Okay. You're saying yes. that you do not de- you, the, the, these Ghanaian people do not deserve an explanation from you as oh. to why oh. what you Clear, clearly yes. don't don't deserve. clearly yes we have failed when it comes to 
this single source matter because we complained about it mm. when it was happening rampantly. Mm. I can show you the press conferences that we had listing all of that. So, and it's not just me, everybody. Mm. So, if we've come into office and we are still, you, you, we can show mm. that we are also engaging in a lot of single source, then we have failed. There's no killing. Say to go, but let me do this. Today is the best day of. COP retired Kofi Bwachi, oh. Nathan Kofi Bwachi. Oh. Today is his birthday. So happy, happy, happy birthday to you, Commander One, uh, uh, COP uh, Nathan Kofi Bwachi. Um, it's also the birthday of the Honorable Minister for, he now works in housing, Koju Oponkruma. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. K-O-N. 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 Yes. Okay. It's, it's lucky it's a K and not a C. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, it's but, uh, pronounced uh, the same. Pre- pre- <laughs> <laughs> so, Kojo, today, today's your birthday. Happy, happy birthday to you, uh, Kojo Pokruba. Happy birthday to you. It's also the birthday of the CEO of the Ghana Chamber of Mines, Dr. Suleiman Okone. Today's your birthday. So, from your wife and uh, your children, they say a happy, happy birthday to you, Dr. Suleiman Okone, CEO of the Ghana Chamber. Of mine. So big happy birthday, COP retired Kofi Buachi. Big happy birthday, the Honorable Kojo Ponkruma. A big happy birthday, Dr. Mm-hmm. Suleiman Kone, CEO Ghana Chamber of Mines. Uh, up next, GM But Kitts. I thought you were going to make uh, the policeman. Well, let's, let's, let's send condolences to uh, our friend, President KJ. Uh, yes, yesterday, for his yesterday I announced the. Yeah. I announced the. And then uh, let me also uh, extend condolences to the Professor Novo family, our second Volta Regional NDC chairman. What who happened? hails from my constituency? He passed. Okay. Um, so his funeral is uh, tomorrow. Okay. okay. So condolences to okay. these two families. The, I'll, the, I'll deal the, with them. The Minerals Commission says that some high quality grade of uh, clay and some things have been found in your constituency. Oh mm. wow! Yes. Yes. That's I hope it doesn't lead to galamse though. Uh, uh, mm. Clay yes. galamse. A lot of them will sleep. <laughs> and I, thought, I, I thought you were going to make a coffee boache the running metal. How oh, he, he he will definitely have a high high place. Oh, is it because he's nice so Well, I had stories that um, <laughs> those of you who are <laughs> <laughs> the two of you, <laughs> you are high, you're deeply involved yeah, in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sami was pushing for the for the, for the, the oh, professor, oh. and um, I thought you, you can would... who can push President Muhammad? You can push President Muhammad. No, I don't know. I didn't say you I'm, push Professor. I'm I said GMG you were pushing <laughs> for him. <laughs> To help meet your business and private printing needs successfully, we have just the right products and services. At Appointed Time Printing Limited, we specialize in digital printing, offset printing, packaging and security printing. Our innovative designs and complete professional touch on our print products such as posters, flyers, printing, SC solutions. This is the maiden edition of Miss Gorgeous Pageant, and we want to know which lady represents which month and who drives away the prize car. The auditions has been extended to Friday, 5th April, here at Metro TV premises. Yes, you heard it right. Come in looking all confident, elegant, and gorgeous, and make yourself and your best man proud as you represent your best man on Miss Gorgeous Pageant. Miss Gorgeous, there to dazzle.
Right, welcome back to the show. Just joined us. This is Good Morning Ghana, live on Metro TV. Time to check our stream on social media. And just to remind you that right after Trends, there's a one-on-one interview with a new managing director of Accra Hearts of Folk. That's for Metro Sports. So the new MD of Accra Hearts of Folk is going to be here live for a one-on-one interview with our sports uh, team. That's right after um, trends with Desi the star boy. Yes, Desi. Look, mm. Phobia, we are saying, Phobia, I want to mean thank you. Phobia. Mm. 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 My, yeah. my family house. Yes. Mm. <laughs> anyway, Doc, uh, this one, a quick one. I, I woke up to the news, or we all woke up mm. to the news that the Assistant Coach for the Black Stars has sued a number of media houses and some sports mm. personalities in the country for the information. Okay. As a lot of people have been talking about it on social media, mm. he's not been happy with um, you know a lot of things that have been said about him. Mm. Sean Otago amongst them will be that of uh, Countryman Zongo. Mm. Uh, so um, he says the formation. So we'll, we'll look into that. We'll wait and see how that one goes there. Mm. And quickly moving on, I know that there is um, a major that's going to be happening between Alan Chomatin and Abu Sakara. Mm. A lot of people have been sharing their thoughts whether it's worth it, whether they could make any great impact you know, on the scene as we're getting into at the elections in December. So that is also trending on uh, Twitter this morning. But one thing that I want to let you know is that, uh, okay, so that's it on the screen there. <laughs> Alan Kay and Abu Sakara. That's a, that's a, uh, quite a, uh, you know, a major. So we'll wait and see what happens with that. But let me also tell you about Miss Gorgeous. If you have been watching, Metro Television, uh, you notice that we've been putting that up on our socials, on, on TV. Miss Gorgeous is our fresh baby coming out. It's, um, it's a pageant, but this time it's about the month which you're born. That's where you'll be representing. And so the auditions are happening. You can still come around if you're a young lady, you think you can rep your month really well. Come by our studios. That's a Northridge here in today. Accra. Yes, today mm-hmm. and also tomorrow. Right, so, so the audition is today and tomorrow. Today and tomorrow. Yes. There's a promo for it, right? Yeah, there's a promo for it. Can we just see the promo? Can we see the promo for Miss Gorgeous? Real quick, yes. and then uh, we will uh, talk about But of course, Doc, you are January. I am June. Mm. Uh, like we were saying the other time, we have, um, you know, June has, in the middle of the month, fine, fine girls and all that. So mm. all right. we can also represent that. So, okay. uh, so watch out for that. Miss Gorgeous, mm. come on your screen. So this is today mm. and also tomorrow. Be part of this and you can show yourself. Mm. Okay, let's watch the promo. To enter the Miss Gorgeous contest, fill out a registration form with 50 Ghana cities at the Metro TV office at Northridge or go online to www.metrotvonline.com. You can also type in the short code star 857 star 8 hash and follow the directions. Next, do a self-introduction video with your phone number, birth month, socials, and send to metrotvonline.com. You will be contacted if you make the shortlist to represent your birth month. Up for grabs, this is Sleek Salon Car for the alternate winner and cash prizes for the final six. Miss Gorgeous 2024, Dare to Dazzle. All right, so the ultimate winner would go with the saloon car mm. and some other cash prizes for all those who get to be part of it. So please, all the fine ladies out there, all the gorgeous ladies out there, please come around and be part of this. Yeah, are you but, are you going to be part of those who are doing will be doing the auditioning? Oh, I'll, like I'll be there. Are you part of the judges? No, but I mean I'm just going to see. Oh, we have we have. You'll be there judge, to do what? To see the fine girls who come for June. <laughs> you, you have been banned from 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 from, from going there. Yes, Emanuela has asked no, me I'm, to. Please, look, I'm working. Emanuela sent me a text. Look, I'm working. She says that I should make sure that you are not part of the Miss Gorgeous thing. So. Have a great weekend. Yeah. So sometimes we must save people from themselves. Have a great weekend, people. Huh? Have a have a great weekend. Oh, I, I do want, do you want to cry? <laughs> Anyway, we, we need to go, but um, I've just been told that today is the 50th birthday of um, Albert Danza Pia. 
So Albert and Zapia, today is your 50th. Happy 50th birthday to you from my brother Eric. And also the um, uh, CEO of Nagod FC, Edward Maruto. Today is also your birthday. Happy birthday to you. So up next, the special edition of Metro Sports, a one-on-one -on -one interview with the Chief Executive or Managing Director of Accra to Folk Sporting Club Limited. They're just done with their AGM. They have new, a new board in, in, in place. Um, so enjoy the weekend. Uh, if you're interested in Miss Gorgeous, the auditioning is on this morning and tomorrow here at Metro TV. You can uh, uh, come in, uh, in or go through the short code that has been uh, put on your screens. Enjoy the, the weekend. Uh, God willing, we'll be with you next Monday.